time, what we did was we were summoned to um, a council by the Open Lords about uh, Neverember and his involvement with the Stolen Dragons. Um, we were um, sent to an antechamber for the council room where we um, well, mostly met up with all the other people who were going to end up testifying, meaning Jerlaxo and um, Renier. Uh, we also brought the uh, Clanghammer, to dwar the dwarf that's actually a dragon, uh, with us to potentially testify. Then um, we were called up to testify. Uh, we were called to testify all at the same time. They went through us asking questions about the details of um, the case and how we knew Neverember was involved. It was a huge fucking mess. Um, <laughs> just put Isn't it kindly, really. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you really shouldn't be arguing with your own party You're like during an interrogation. But it just, just keeps happening. Um, um so to work to our advantage yeah yeah one of the um mask lords who definitely wasn't uh drawn uh pointed out that we couldn't possibly have uh orchestrated any of this as we are a mess <laughs> um i see no lies mm -hmm. um so we did our testimony the open lord had a made a big display of just like bring all the dragons into the room um there was a lot of like noise whenever we answered the question um the council the famous well, can we mm -hmm. recreate the rubble 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 effect that one rubble 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 um so yeah so that noise was made a bunch um um the dragon was there i mean yeah. the dwarf yeah, um, so while we were um, there, we also noticed that uh, among the councils that were, uh, some people were distinctly more hostile and more defensive of Neverember, specifically in the middle right bit of the council. Um, mm. Of course, we have no idea who those people are because, you know, masked. Um, after which we were sent back to the antechamber um, and then First, Clanghammer, then Renier, and then Jelaxol were sent to testify. Uh, Clanghammer just essentially uh, said he was hired by Neverember and proved that he, in fact, knew all those dragons. And they were, in fact, the dragons of um, that were embezzled. Um, after that, you know, Renier just mostly just kind of... <laughs> Talked to them about how his dad was probably involved, and Jelaxol uh, made a big spiel uh, about returning the staff and the Arcane Brotherhood being a problem. Um, and after all of that was finished, uh, um, most of us went to drink. Oh, no, uh, I forgot. Before that, we were uh, brought back into the chamber oh, yes. so mm -hmm. uh, Silverhand could give Vorden methods that she assigned to keep uh, Hibara's flame under control. Essentially, um, minor water spirits. Um, and then Hibara uh, lit a chair on fire. <laughs> In front of the council, being all antsy. And then they put him out, and then you, she needed to ask him to stop them from doing that, so they could light it on fire and point out that it stopped her from putting it out. Uh, it was originally going to be a dart. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thing Clute also it's fucking not. Um, and then after Mara that, continued to switch personalities and has gained the nickname uh, when she is in war form. She is nicknamed Writer. Yes. I mean, yeah, by, Th well, that's by your Jorlaxle special. Jorlaxle that's your yeah. special Jorlaxle name. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, other people can use it too, but he couldn't call you Red Rider. I couldn't call you Red Rider because I was just thinking of Red Riding Hood, and I was eventually going to make up that make that mistake. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta head this off now. Rider. I can remember Rider. That and plus, it sounds really fucking cool. So yeah, you went with Rider. Uh, oh, sorry, I like Red Rider. <laughs> Red Rider is cool, but if I would eventually go Red Riding Hood, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. 
There's also something just on a weird DM thing today when I was thinking about prep for the game. Um, I feel as a DM, I don't understand all of the plans Jarlaxle has. Like that's that is like a, that's the kind of character he is to me. Like I could, like I was looking through the Dragon Heist book and suddenly he's putting a sp- put a spy in the Xanathar Guild. Like oh, that's what you've been up to, Jarlaxle. So anyway, yes, he's got a special name for war now, and he calls it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. After that, most of the party went to drink. Um, Clue made some money um, conning some people with um, Yagra. Yeah, it's Tarvel right. mm-hmm. Tarv- Tarv- looked down the well a bunch, um, yes. which we now canonically has a bunch of barf at the bottom. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. And whose fault is that? Mine. I fully <laughs> accept that. Um, after which, um, also he Perry, borrowed... Perry, what did you do at the bar after all of the party, after all the stuff? Sorry, I have clue. Perry just went and played dice. Oh, that's right. You went and won some dice at a dice. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I was just uh, trying to remember what everyone <laughs> uh, did. Uh, Telvar, you know, uh, yeah, already went. He sat down the well for point some time. Um, he borrowed. Lit shit on fire, lit part of Clue on fire, so the Bevis would put them out. Uh, then gave all of that money back to uh, the barkeep, whose name I forgot. Durndon. Yeah. Durndon. Yeah. Yeah. Durndon. Yeah, you got Durndon. your water methods, and you did a whole, like, fire and lighting show, and then you, like, Clue was like, light me on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, all right, <laughs> you're fireproof, it'll be fine. Zip up your leg. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then a bunch of other drunk patrons uh, volunteered. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They thought that was hilarious. Light my drink mm-hmm. on fire. Light my friend on fire. Light my pencil on fire. There's all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever really established if the light my friend on fire was also <laughs> someone who's fireproof. <laughs> I, I, I like what? to think that they. I like to think that they weren't. They just saw somebody doing it. Oh, that's probably fine. Entirely forgetting deep things of fire resistance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, there would there'd be like light my friend on fire. Uh okay. <laughs> ah, fuck no. Ah. <laughs> There's a sign behind the bar that says all impl- um all injuries are the responsibility of customers. Like that turned and hung up there yeah. ages ago. So his insurance yeah. is like holds you harm. Once you cross the threshold, all damage you take is yours. He bears no responsibility. Yep. I mean the bar is logic. I got mending. Mm-hmm. I got heels. We're good. <laughs> um, and I don't exactly remember what Mara was doing. Um, Mara somehow thought it was a good idea um, to go ahead and um, tell Jarlaxel that there are much more efficient uh, methods of oh, killing yeah. in <laughs> her <laughs> universe. <laughs> um, and now I have to figure out how I'm going to, what guns I'm going to introduce <laughs> into but this the, fucking look, game. Like, look, that's the thing, though. The thing about Mara is she's talking about guns, but I feel like she's going to be that meme of, like, going back into history with, and dazzling people with your amazing science knowledge and just going like, so there's this thing called electricity. I don't know how it works or how to make it, but it exists. <laughs> That's like, basically like, what she said. She's like, like I feel like there's Jalaxis a Gatling gun. Them. I don't know how it works, but it's a thing, and it I kills feel like all Jalaxis the people. Is like, gonna come like back tomorrow, asking her for ideas how to build guns. She's gonna go like, no, you make it like shoot, but like a bunch of times. <laughs> Like entirely useless information, like something anybody would have tried entirely unprompted. Yep. Yeah. Basically. When I, whenever I'm improv in improvisation with you, doing improvisation with you guys, <laughs> if it's just like a tavern NPC, whatever, you know, they just like want to make some money and whatever. Mm-hmm. But like you get drunk and you start talking to guns about Jarlaxle or to to about guns with Jarlaxle, and suddenly I'm like, okay, what would Jarlaxle have to do in this situation? And I'm like, she really gonna do this? So I was like, tell me more about these guns. He starts making notes and you keep going. He's like, draw me a diagram and you keep going. <laughs> How far I, can I push I this? I need an adult. <laughs> Kelsey, honest to God, I really want to hear you try and explain like nuclear weapons at some point. Don't get me started. Uh, uh, what I'll end up doing is introducing him to the pipe bomb. <laughs> and just be like, so my friend Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> yeah, you did bring up the Unabomber. I think that was a... I did. Session. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> He's one of my favorites. Okay. Um, right. uh, and yeah, the United uh, States has some really good, like, we have some really creative serial killers. I'm sorry. It's a thing. Uh, <laughs> I have a problem. After, uh, well, we didn't really role play after the party, but I assume most people got. Home yeah, yeah. Because Parker, enough. yeah, you had the carriage. Parker started off with a couple drinks early on, then he switched to water. So you know he was fine on this because it was snowing that night. So uh, sorry, that was as far as that lo- that was as far as that went. So like, I didn't have half more. So yeah. y'all got home <laughs> fine. So yeah. actually, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, just we got home fine. Uh, next morning, Clue pl- probably has a hangover, but <laughs> nothing yes, else. Yes, everyone who drank nothing. anything last uh, last night in session, please give me a constitution roll for the next morning. See how hungover you feel. I mean, I, I feel like I Clue would need. I feel like Clue would need to, considering how hard he was going. So, yep. <laughs> uh-huh. Roll with disadvantage, because you were fucking uh, I mean, lit. I, I mean, I effectively did. The second one is a 10, so... Taking back to my German lessons. Gestern Abend war ich total blau. Last night I was totally hammered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's blue is hammered. So, I know that colloquialism. It's just for me, because I have my German test in two days. All right. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, everyone Wait, else... Wait, did you say blue? Yeah, blue. Is... When I turn um, blue, blue, or basically I, I go was... blue. Oh my blue. god. Da, 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 da. Yep. <laughs> Preceded the that, song. That brings a whole new meaning to that song. <laughs> I'm drunk. If I was sober, I would... Okay. Um, I'm gonna go cry in a corner somewhere, because you just ruined my childhood. Yeah. Uh, so, y'all feeling a little bit rough today. You're not, like, still puking, but that headache, that hangover headache, uh, you're, like, just turn the world down a little bit the next morning. Uh, when you got back, you might not remember this clue, or some of you, but there was a message for Jarvis just saying, um, uh, we'll be, uh, can we have a meeting tomorrow morning? And that was a note sort of just left on the bar for those of you sober enough um, mm-hmm. to remember. But... Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine that, you know, those of you who are drunk probably slept a little bit longer. Would anybody, uh, Hibara, Hibara's got stuff she could possibly be doing. Is there anything in particular she would want to do in the morning before the others got up? Because you'd only need four hours of trance. Well, she only needs four hours of trance then, and she wasn't drinking anything. So, yeah. she really would not hung over. <laughs> but no, she wouldn't be doing anything especially out of the ordinary, just given good berry to uh oh madam, madam cookery. cookery yep so the whole yeah. the um uh, except mm, here's the thing you go downstairs and uh madam cookery is there but she's not doing a whole bunch of baking she just seems to be like making a smaller breakfast and things um and jarvis is also downstairs of course Liff and sippy are down there as well everyone else is still uh still asleep uh, but um all, like the shutters are all closed it's all lit from the inside it doesn't look like a normal because with the bakery smells you kind of been doing a bit of a business in the morning especially when y'all were in never winter madam cookery was selling those little things that would give you like an extra bonus on a um on a long rest and those were getting sold for a little while but it's just empty like it looks like the business is shut down when you get down there the next morning the bobs aren't up yet. They're sleeping in because they had the day off. Well, she'll put the ba- she'll put the good berries in the bowl like mm-hmm. usual. Madam Cookery will greet Madame you. Cucuri. Yeah. Good morning, Nibara. Present, presents the bowl. Here are the good berries. Oh, thank you. Muffins coming up. What's where? What about the normal pastries that you use with them? Oh, we had um. Uh, Jarvis told us that the business is currently temporarily closed uh, because um, we are hiding from the press for the next 72 hours. Why? Um, I don't... Uh, sorry, I went from French to English. Uh, um, 
Uh, je ne sais pas. 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 Je ne sais I think uh, they went out to uh, grab a newspaper, but uh, should be back in any moment. And as she's saying that, actually, the back door to the kitchen, which I don't have the map for here because we're in a different session, uh, opens. And yeah, they just Jarvis with like all of the newspapers. <laughs> they have brought back about seven newspapers um, and they turn around and say, oh, bonjour, Madame Cookery. Oh, bonjour, Ebara. What you doing with all of that? Ah, well, uh, let me just uh, grab some uh, here. Can you take these through to the bar? Just let me get a, a little bit of coffee and some pastries. And uh, and uh, you can have a look at this, too. And Jarvis reaches into their winter coat with their gloves on. You see how I just... What about the big stack of newspapers? Yeah, yeah. He, they're or, did not he, or did they hand them to they, the Ibarra? They, they handed them to Ibarra. Like, in okay, order so to... just holding the giant stack of newspapers. Yes, yes. Um, reaches in, pulls out what looks like a really nice thick fancy brochure with a, a silvery front on it puts that on top of the newspapers and says if if you could just take that through to the bar i'm going to get uh, some coffee and pastries uh, do you want me to grab you anything and, and then i'll come through and, and i can explain do, it all do we what wh why why we have so many newspapers <laughs> so, oh, Jarvis, you're looking sort of confused at this pile of newspapers and um yeah do you want to uh, look at all at, at, at uh, the brochure I mean, Are she doesn't really care about the brochure. She is just confused by this massive <laughs> pile of newspapers. Yes. Well, um, you see, I received an emergency message from Omen Drawn last night. Um, and, and Jarvis just starts, like, pouring themselves a coffee and getting out a plate and uh, helping themselves to probably more pastries than uh, their figure would suggest. <laughs> and uh, then it sort of gestures to you to come through and and says, um, uh, apparently we're about to be swarmed because of your adventures with the dragons. Um, the message was a uh, paper bird, so there wasn't much in the way of information. But um, headquarters have basically just uh, are going to be helping with the press coverage of this. And currently there's a, an embargo on, uh, on access to members of the party. And as a consequence, we're just shutting the business down um, until... Uh, I don't really know. I, I feel like you need to, to tell me what happened as well. So by but, this point, they're walking you like to why the bar. Is, if she's just following along, pulled in this giant stack of newspapers, but why are there so many? All right, well, we have to see what the various newspapers are saying about the story. Oh, okay. She just drops them on the bar table, the tabletop of the bar. Yeah, just blam. Blam. That's fine. That's fine. So they go uh, all over the bar, just boom. Yeah. Spread out. Yes. Uh, Jarvis sort of actually like pushes them. What is that noise? Okay. <laughs> All right. That's better. Um, Jarvis sort of like pushes them, you know, aside. He's not that keen on them and sits down his coffee and says, but the really interesting thing is the other thing that Omen sent me last night, which is, uh, which is this right here. And they kind of push over the brochure to you and he said uh, uh pick it up uh have a have a look at the front cover what's on the cover okay so the brochure itself is like it gives the appearance of a soft green leather book almost and it also smells as a druid you would know immediately i won't even make you roll it smells of lilies Set into the cover is a polished oval mirror with a delicate gold frame styled like locks of hair, which appear to, um, sorry, sorry, uh, like when you pick it up, you notice that the hair will kind of like perfectly fit your hairline, like it's cascading down your face. It also has on the front of it beautiful uh, illustrations of um, like woodland scenes and and a lot of basically it's a it almost looks like it's been handcrafted when you pick it up and you look into that shiny mirror you first see your own reflection and then after a few seconds it swims and becomes fuzzy and then starts to re-sharpen focus except it's a woman's voice a woman's face and she says, 
Well met, dearest one. How do you feel today? Are you in there, or is this like a <laughs> portal thing? Oh, I'm here to help you find your most, um, your beautiful, most beautiful inner self. Tell me, is there something? Okay, so you're like... not trapped in this. No, 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 no. Uh, so tell me, is there is there anything you'd want to change about yourself? I could I could see you no. with combed hair, and as you <laughs> <My hair is> fine. <laughs> as you look into the mirror, the face again swims, and it's you, but this time instead of like what I imagine is the slightly matted, razzled, unkempt. I mean, set down, but occasionally there are pieces that just kind of go a little bit astray. Um, you have this sort of like really beautiful, flowing, watery hair sort of all over you. Uh, not all over you, but like, you know, kind of... Is it dyed a different color? No, it's the same color. It just looks kind of like your current hair, but almost like a, a you know, a, a commercial version of what your hair could be like. He said, at the Temple of the Restful Lily, you can not only get rest and health and relaxation, but we have magical special treatments that can help adjust your appearances in small ways to give you that inner confidence. It's I already have inner confidence. I don't... <laughs> also, if you're doing the outside, isn't that not inner confidence? Isn't that just outside confidence? She says, would you perhaps like more muscles? And the image swims again. And you can see yourself, but this time it's like you're looking in a full-length mirror, even though it's just your face. It's kind of weird. And you look like an athlete, like a runner. Like, you know, you're like all toned and your legs are Oh, you know, don't look like a bodybuilder? No, no, no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. You look like a sleek runner, you know? Like... Why? We can help you become your best you at the Temple of the Restful Lily. She looks up at, is uh, is Jarvis still here? Oh yeah, Jarvis is watching this whole conversation, drinking coffee, okay. over, like sort of looking at you over his coffee cup, just watching your reaction. She looks up at Jarvis and says, this looks more like a Felvar thing mm. than a me thing. Fair enough. Well, I, I'm so mm -hmm. happy. <laughs> I, I, I was told by the Bobs you were all in quite late last night. What, 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 uh, I, I'll wait till everyone comes down to get the whole story, but, uh, was it a fun evening? Yeah, mostly just setting drunk people on fire. Seemed to really like that. Jarvis's eyes widen a bit, and then he looks immediately, or sorry, they look immediately down to your ankle, <laughs> and they notice that your, your, uh, your ASBO cuff, and that's what I'm going to call it, your antisocial beho uh, beho behavior order, uh, a ankle bracelet is your asbo cuff uh, is gone and says oh hibara um I, I guess your meeting with the council went very well last night i guess they mostly <laughs> just yelled at each other and talked about stuff and they dumped a whole bunch of gold in front of us at one point but eh, i've seen gold like that before if um if jarvis knew of picasso Jarvis would describe a description of anything Hibara gives like a Picasso painting. That like... is what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's uh, wait for the others to wake. And uh, congratulations on... Uh, they took away your restriction on setting fire, I see. Well, that was never a thing. Yes. Yeah, so they I, only... Well... They were just... I don't know whoever is in charge... Of, well, I actually do know who's in charge of the magic stuff mm -hmm. for the city. But, like, whoever they've got in charge of smaller things, like that stupid ankle bracelet, they are dumb. <laughs> like, they just went through the spell list and just was like, oh, that says the word fire. Well, we need to get rid of that. You know, including things that controls fire so that it doesn't spread out of hand. But now I got these water babies. What? What water As she babies? said that, she held, uh, she was holding up her wrist and looking at the little jewels inside them. How, um, water babies? Jarvis looks incredibly confused. You have yeah, a, um, a bracelet? She picks, up one of, she picks up one of the newspapers. Read this one quickly. <laughs> All right, Jarvis takes the newspaper. She's standing there waiting. 
uh, yeah, Jarvis, yeah, is standing there with the newspaper. She's literally just standing there staring at him reading the newspaper. Okay. <laughs> After a while, Jarvis looks at us like, okay, what, what's, where are the water babies? I don't understand. Okay. She takes the newspaper um, and she takes each page and balls it up into rather loose balls. All right, he takes so like the front a... page. He gives you like the sports section. <laughs> that's that's only like two pages. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Like he doesn't want you to. He just bought. He just bought this paper. They just bought this paper. They don't want to chuck it out now. Okay. And they then want in to, that case, they want to. They want case, to she's going to take the squirt section from mm -hmm. all the newspapers. Okay. 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 Puts it on the tiled floor. So there's a probably knee-ish height mm -hmm. loose ball stack pile of newspaper. Mm -hmm. and she goes, "Watch this," and she whispers into her wrist. Get ready. Get ready. There's about to be a fire. <laughs> and she runs her fingers down the pile and it lights up. All right. As you do. Yeah. The the stones glow and from there emerge your two uh, homebrewed water methods that don't exist in the book. So I'll give you the deets on them later. They uh, Jack and G are like, ah, fire, fire. And uh, this time, like before, they would just sort of like just go all out, you know, fire hose everything. But now you've worked with them. Right, so they're they're like kind of enjoying this uh, the challenge of like finding creative ways of putting fire out. So this time, kind of like more like water pistols, they go um on each side of it, and they do it in turn. They like do poof, poof. Each of them are like like a pump or something, and uh, eventually they they put it out, and uh, you know it's a soaking mess, and there's the room stinks of new burnt newspaper now. And then they come flying over to you, and they sort of are flapping in front of you. It's like was that good, Hibara? That was excellent. Yay! Now back in the little cup. Okay. They kind of like a first they like look over uh, at the pastries on the bar. And they're like, pastries? That smells good. Before we go back, can we take those? Yeah, sure. So they go over to Jarvis's plate and they like steal all his food, <laughs> their food. And then they <laughs> fuck off. Okay. Uh <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> Honestly, she was kind of expecting them to take like all the pastries. Oh in no, the that's whole just room. Oh no, the ones at Jarvis. He, but those were all the ones in the room. They were all of Jarvis's. <laughs> Poor Jarvis. <laughs> looks at this mess and looks at his empty plate. It's like, oh, Hibara, you are such a wonderful opportunity to practice patience. <laughs> Here, I'll help clean this up. <laughs> and now there's no more water on the floor. All right, just the burnt newspaper. Just the burnt newspaper bits. All right. Oh, Lord. Jarvis will clean that up. And says, well, I, um, I, I, I guess you've now got <laughs> both water and uh, fire elemental friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's quite, quite the reward. This is a reward, right? Oh, no. It's supposed to be a punishment. <laughs> oh, I see. You've the city of giving you your own fire service. Well, yes, very honestly, much. honestly, that's not that's not a terrible idea. Well, I know they should have done this from the start. <laughs> Maybe with um wildfire druids from now on, this will be standard operating procedure. <laughs> and they just nodding. Like, <laughs> With that, Mara like has decided to make it her appearance. She's kind of like yeah, yeah. She 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 drunk or not drunk, but she she hungover. Hung hung over. Yeah. Oh no, it, it's far beyond hungover. Oh okay, you, you um, were that drunk. Okay, so your ten is basically like your well, you're not puking, but uh, no, you're one yeah. step away. She's like an Irish man drunk kind of thing. <laughs> they think that image. That's okay. what's Mark. That's what's going on with Mara right now. Okay. Um, and so like she she makes her way downstairs and sees the tail end of the 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 white the the, the water and just goes, mm -hmm, maybe I go back to bed. Uh, Jarvis, copy, please. It just sounds so she comes bad. in just with the snow, with the show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gore goes, goes with you. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, yes, he is, but Mara's just like, no, it's too early for bullshit. Fuck. 
<laughs> so you go for your coffee. Gorko comes over to you, Hibara, and his and his eyes are just really wide. He's like, Hibara, mm -hmm. what, are you a god? <laughs> no. You make people. You make creatures. I just saw them. You made creatures, and then they live in you. It's amazing. And that's just how elementals work. You could get one too if you wanted. I could. I could. I could make a a a. Uh, what uh, what was that thing? Well, these are methods. Method. I could have a method. Well, I guess we could find you one. Wow, <laughs> the NPC is going to get an NPC. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how these things work. How many medals is left? Just a cascade of NPCs. Yeah. <laughs> Menagerie. Oh, he's really yeah. Like, Gorko is absolutely fascinated. He's like, um, can we can could you try it again? Um, uh, could we go over? Um, I should uh maybe put out the this fire in the fireplace before I start a new one, right? Gorko wants um, to sit by the fireplace and have the methods like put it out, and then you take the water away and he lights it again, and then you take the water away and the methods put it you know fight light it on fire and just do that for like an hour. <laughs> That's what he wants well, to you, do. Well, you see, Gorko, fire is a tool not a toy <laughs> it can hurt people <laughs> oh my god hot meat kettle um oh if he was any smarter i'd have him roll insight and i'd make you roll deception but i don't think gorko's that smart he's pretty i mean he has a pretty decent end like yeah, he I didn't is an archinacher i didn't import his character sheet though so i can't actually have him roll because this wasn't supposed to we weren't supposed to do this <laughs> Like I'm pretty sure he's like he might very much be smart. Alright, you Ibarra, you roll you roll honest. roll a deception. Roll a deception because you are lying to poor little Gorko. And, no, she's uh, not. not lying. It's a tool, not a toy, girl. Did you see yourselves at the bar last night? <laughs> okay, yeah, the bar last night is definitely like, you don't know that. I <laughs> this do. is one of them adult lies. I'm, I'm, I... <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. I I go on without me. <laughs> But I, I'm God, and I know you're lying. So roll deception. <laughs> See how good you're lying. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna roll. I'm just gonna give him a base plus two. All right, let's, I think that's a reasonable um, insight because I just opened. He has a minus one because he has low wisdom. <laughs> oh, okay, so well. he's got a minus one. All right, thank you for checking. By the way, oh, he still makes. It. He's looking at you skeptically. Like he's not gonna call you a liar, but he's just not believing that it's a tool, not a toy line. You know how like kids, they just like raise their yeah. eyebrow and turn. Yeah, that's what you're getting from Gorko right now. It's like, is she pulling my leg? So, Come on, Hibara, let's start a fire. I would, <laughs> I would smile. say it was more of like the little kid going, "I call bullshit." <laughs> yep, that's it. Okay, I've imported Gorko's sheet. Oh, thank you. I'll go <laughs> activate it. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. I'll give you all access. Uh, edit. Oh my gosh, it runs. Oh, it's already set. It's, oh, it imported those things too. So you should have been. Wow, that was surprising. Normally I have to set those. Very odd. That's weird. Maybe it's because I created it. It's an NPC. Uh, rather maybe than because a it's character sheet. Globe. Yeah, possibly. Hmm. Oh, it works. Yeah, it, yeah. That's all that matters. Correct. All right, so, but Gorko just gets a big goblin smile. And he leans in. He's like, come on, Ibarra, let's start a fire. And at that, Felvar walks your mom. into the bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at that, Felvar walks in, uh, into the bar. He's like, good morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Gorko's <laughs> Uh, uh, Gorko's like, uh, Thelvar, um, um, tell Habara that it's it's completely okay to start a fire to show me, um, her, her, um, new, th uh, magic, how she is a god and, and makes creatures. Tell her it's okay. In the fireplace, it's completely okay. We won't have to clean anything up or anything. Habara's making the shrug emoji. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just like, as long no as it's in the fire, fuck. as long as it's in the fireplace, that is fine. We don't want to... Hold on. Abara, have you been lighting fires on the floor already? No. I lit one fire. Yes, I can see from the bubbling on the varnish of the hardwood floors. I loaded on the <sighs> kitchen tile. 
No, you were in the bar. Yeah, behind the bar. I said on the tile. Oh, okay. All right. I, I missed that part. So it was behind the bar. Okay. Yes. On the tiles. But it does smell, still smell like newspaper, burnt newspaper down here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Please confine it to the fireplace, Abara. <laughs> Jarvis needed a demonstration of the water babies. Jarvis, like, I did not understand what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Isn't that the story of pretty much anything with Abara? Abara <laughs> makes me work the creative side of my brain. Indeed. He's just nodding at both of these statements. <laughs> Good morning, Salvar. Good morning, Jarvis. Uh, things are a bit uh, quiet this morning. Oh, yes. Well, um, uh, we've had ho orders from uh, Omen Drawn at main office that uh, we're supposed to stay away from the press today. And uh, since open businesses give an open door to people to sneak in under cover and try to get up into the private residences or, uh, you know, talk to the staff off the record or bribe people, thought it would be easier for us to just shut things down until we are ready to proceed. But the thing is, he sent a paper bird. It was quite late at night, um, and it doesn't have much information. So I thought uh, it would wait for all of you to have a morning meeting because we, I would like to know what happened. And also, we have, uh, well, uh, I have some good news and some bad news for the party. Yeah. Uh, yes, the uh, precautions seem reasonable. Uh, I would uh, make extra sure that uh, Mara understands. She has I'm a right here, English... you asshole! <laughs> she screams she... from across the bar. <laughs> I just I'm picturing this like a, a over the shot from Jarvis, and then you just hear um. So you're looking at Thelvar from over Jarvis's shoulder, and then you hear Mara from off screen. I'm right here, asshole. <laughs> Uh, yes, hello, Mara. I didn't see you there. Um, yes, uh, but no, come on, you must admit, you do seem to have a thing for the press at the moment. The press is a good tool to use and to manipulate. If we have a good relationship with the press. Mm. And Mara just kind of does the, like, no, 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 with her hands. <laughs> like, Delver, I don't understand how you don't get this. Uh... Causing the press to uh, put scandalous stories in their papers is hardly good press. Yes, but at the same time, it also allowed for things to go the way we wanted them to. I think uh, Omen's intention was just that if we are going to talk to the press, it should be in a controlled manner. Uh, uh, indeed. Yes. I As publicity officer, uh, I will take that responsibility. I think there's also. Do you have also... any relationships with any of the press? Mara asks from her. I have corner. relationships with many people in this city. I, I said the press, not people. I have dealt with the press in the past, yes. Mm. Do they like you? Mm. Yeah, that's what I thought. As and much Mara as goes back like to her copy. Yeah, but see, I can sweet talk. And Mara just kind of like shows off dimples. <sighs> it goes back to drinking sweet, her coffee <laughs> sweet talking only gets you so far with the press uh, once they get a bee in their bonnet about you no amount of sweet talking can help yeah I, I well aware been there done that. well um the papers uh, seem to well have many accounts i think i would like to hear yours directly but uh the bar Certainly, when I was out there this morning to see fetch these, is already getting sort of just a, a lot of looky loos and gawkers who just kind of come by and point and whisper already. <clears throat> and Jarvis sort of gestures at all of the newspapers on the bar. Oh, I um, we should get the other two down. Uh, lift there. Yeah. Would you mind uh, popping up and waking up uh, Clue and Sib? Uh, uh, Perry, yep. even. Lyft goes over it because we did the downtime activity where he gets his new uh, talky thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He goes over to the corner where his um, 
his unit is, his speech transpire, and he puts like a ghostly hand through it, and above it, in like rainbow glitter font, says, with pleasure, Thelvar. And Glyph looks at you and is like so happy. It just looks so happy to like be able to use your name and to answer you with more than just a nod or a shake to be able to communicate. I mean, there's limited space. You you know, it's like less than Twitter, mm -hmm. but definitely happy. And then he floats up right through the ceiling um, and into the next floor. So, um, <clears throat> yes, by the way, a, a clue or Perry, are you both asleep at this point or still? Uh, yeah, Chloe is still marked out. <laughs> I like the idea that this is also the moment Perry walks in, still wrapped up in a blanket. <laughs> okay, on that note, uh, when Jarvis said people have been skulking about being looky loos around the mm -hmm. place, yep. Uh, Hibara would have both would have like sat upright from sitting next to the fire and playing with Gorko in the fire, and then said, oh, no, I need to go check on Daryl, and then <laughs> runs away. And since this would be the time Perry is coming in bundled up, yeah. runs into Perry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, investigate if there's any de uh, dead reporters on uh, her hey, balcony. Yep. <laughs> Daryl? So, Daryl, oh, your plant the thing. Vine. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Because you you rush upstairs. The defenses. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I, Jarvis doesn't know. I don't think Jarvis remembers you named your plant. Um, and he's just gonna look at the rest of you. And go. Who the fuck is Daryl? <laughs> um. No. So yeah, you can go up. There's a, a yeah. I don't you think go she's to told them. anyone Daryl's name. No. Yeah. So like, she'd be like. Jarvis is really confused now. He's like, who the fuck is Daryl and why is he in my house? And I don't know about it. Not my house, but like my place of employment. You know, like, who's Daryl? So where do you go? All the way up to this, the roof? Well, she goes up to the roof to check out Daryl, yeah. yeah. Make, sure, make sure there's no dead people in them. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't be in them. No, so you go and you kind of like pop op open the door that goes to the roof uh, proper. And the, the so the roof itself is it's got like a dusting of snow. The blood vines seem to be sort of like winter hibernating. You know, they're um, they're not dead, but they seem to be, you know, uh, just hanging out covered in snow. You don't see any footprints up here. You don't see any bodies. Um, <laughs> but if you were to take a look around you know, your surroundings a little bit, you would, uh, well, yeah, you want to roll a perception from and have a look around yeah, or would you just be interested in the okay. blood, blood, blood vines? Yeah, so you can definitely see when you look down, because uh, if you walk over and look at the main street in front of you, that the traffic, the foot traffic and the street traffic are normal, except when it kind of like gets to the front of your building, people are pausing and stopping and, and talking. Carriages are like pause and people will look out and have, you know, like the carriage riders will say something. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's Troll Skull Matter. That's that's the place of, uh, that's the yield haunt. And yeah, it, it definitely seems to be uh, uh, the case that your building itself is attracting attention. Is there a gaggle of looky loos down below? Not in the street, but if you go to the, because your perception was really high, if you go to the back, there are a bunch of looky loos in your back alley. Not up your back okay. alley, but you know that location between like yours yeah. and Fala's? Yeah. yeah. She'd yeah. go over there and say, hey, you people. They look up, like kind of startled that they're getting shouted uh, at from above. Don't climb up here. <clears throat> Why? Dangerous. Daryl will kill you. Who the fuck Probably. is Daryl? <laughs> That's going to become well, our new he's, name. He's on the <laughs> roof, and he'll kill you if you try to come up here. So don't climb up here. Okay. I think, I think Mara Good. needs to explain the Streisand effect to Habara. <laughs> 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 so yeah, downstairs, by the way, you guys can hear muffled. Anyone want to roll perception in the bar? Let's see if you can hear this conversation out the back. No, no. Thelvar done. No, no. Too busy looking at the Thelvar's asleep. 
you know, and uh, yeah, Clue's still asleep. And what about, oh, yeah, no, 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 this is just like, you just hear noise. You hear people shouting in your back, uh, the back of the shop area. But uh, yeah, so the people outside, like, they look kind of confused and like, okay, we won't climb on your roof. Good. One of them yells. And then Habara goes back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah, Habara returns. Uh, all right. So Perry, sorry, you came down, walked, you stepped into the bar and uh, you get bumped into by Hibara as she's leaving. Ah, good morning, Perry. How are you doing this fine morning? <clears throat> you're muted. I wasn't sure if you were lagged or muted. You're both, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I think I drank too much. <clears throat> oh, dear. <sighs> And just for confirmation, Perry is currently basically a ball. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wrapped for the blanket. Trying to stay warm. Oh, by the way, when you ran off, Jack and Gila got dragged along because they're tied. Like, they can't leave your, so much of a distance. So when you, like, left, they kind of looked at Gorko for a second, and then they both got yanked <laughs> and dragged along. <laughs> so That's there's, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like like dogs on leads or leashes, depending on what form of English you speak. That sounds like a bit of a design flaw. <laughs> I think it's like Aren't 120 just... feet. It's 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 enough for they, but they're not meant to fly away. You know, it's they're they're bound yeah, to yeah, her when yeah, she's yeah, on the plane. Tw 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 twenty feet isn't much. What's no, no, 120. Oh no, 120. If it's 120 feet, it's like as long as she's in the bar, she wouldn't be pulling them long. But when she goes up to the roof, yeah, yeah, 120 feet. That seems reasonable, yeah. Yeah, but if Habara wants to set a fire now, all she's got to do is set a fire strong enough and then just yeet it 120 feet away and they can't put it out. Okay, well, never mind. Oh, like, she is fast. Mara can yeet something 120 fast. feet away. Uh, Mara sees the two little uh, methods go bing, and she goes... <laughs> <laughs> I mostly just made that up for comedy effect at the moment because I thought uh, it would be funny. Mar Mara I mean, is just make dead. A 60 and it's fine. Uh, Mara is dead. Mara just is like, she hung over and she hung over like Irish people get hung over, but she just <laughs> laughing her ass off. She's having a gay old time over here. Yeah. I mean, 60 feet, they would each get two attacks on whatever fire you have and they just automatically, like, I don't roll to, they always re up their water. So that would be like four attacks to put out water if you were dashing away. So it should be fine. Okay. Um, yes. So sorry, Perry. Poor Perry. Who <laughs> <laughs> goes behind the bar to get coffee and then notices all the newspapers and goes, So who won the fishing contest? <laughs> oh. Uh, Jarvis will pipe up when no one answers. It's so I'm um, sorry, I, I bought them this morning. Uh, if you could take a quick look, you can see that all of them are about you. Well, incidentally, about you. They're mostly about the money being recovered in the council meeting, but the party name does come up as well as some other notable people who have come through these doors lately. Oh, Jarvis good morning. Tell him. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Clanghammer is just sh showing up for breakfast at this point. Jarvis isn't going to tell Perry about all the sports sections. <laughs> oh, uh, and, and, like, <laughs> no, because that's where I assume a fishing contest would be. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, that's <laughs> yes, true. Unfortunately, there, there's no fishing section uh, in this because uh, uh, Habara was putting on a, a display of her her new friends, given to her courtesy of the council. Mm, some fire and water, a bit of yin and yang. Sound familiar? Oh, Disturb methods. not the harmony of fire, ice, and lightning, <laughs> lest these titans wreak destruction upon the world in which they... I'm sorry, that came out of nowhere. Mar Mara just goes, I, I haven't sung Pokemon in a while. Sorry, folks. Uh, yes, but if you want to have a have a look, um, there's all of the papers put out by in the city of Waterdeep here. 
holds the paper. He's got his coffee. He takes a bar stool and starts looking at the papers. Okay. Put a pin in that. Clue, you are still a little bit drunk, I think. You are sleeping in your room. The All of the curtains are drawn, you know, you, even though it's starting to get light out now. And yeah, a lift comes, it pops up through the floor. And there's no real way for him to, like, talk to you and wake you up. So what he does is he goes where your feet are by the bed. And um, he basically, like, zips through you. And so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna roll like kind of like an attack for him. So he's gonna use his basically uh, poltergeisty body and interact with yours so that you get a wave of like uh, cold sensation that uh, sort of uh, and pins and needles for like a second in your feet. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's. Uh, so yeah, you're dreaming, the dreamless dream of a drunk, and uh, suddenly it's in, like you feel like your feet have been plunged into an ice pool, uh, and also you've lost, like uh, you had your blood cut off to them for a few seconds, and there's this intense cold and tingly, but then it's over. You don't even like feel the after effects, but it definitely wakes you up. That clue just like chills straight, just like, ah, oh, not again! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, Jarvis. Oh, no, it's it? Liv. Yeah. Oh, Liv. Hey, Liv. How's it going? Liv is, like, looking really embarrassed, like, uh, and then points downstairs and points at you and then points downstairs and then just sort of dives into the floor and disappears. Like, now, it's like, the adrenaline of being woken up just kind of settles. He just suddenly realizes he's, like, massively hungover. Yes. Uh, yeah, guess I'm going. Guess I'm going downstairs. Uh, and like as he like goes downstairs, like he looks like the kind of person who's like very comfortable with being this hungover. Like this is the first time he's happened. It's not the last time it's gonna happen. He just needs to get through it. <laughs> so as soon as he's gets outside, he's just like, uh, I need some fucking water. Uh, <laughs> goes behind the bar, just grabs a bottle and just starts chugging. Uh, good morning, Clue, Jarvis says. It's calm for what I assume is pretty late in the morning at this point. I think it's getting at about 10.30. Yeah, should be more people in at that point. Anything happening over here? Oh, yes. Uh, orders from main office to close the business uh, because apparently you all had a very interesting meeting with the council last night and now, well, um, everybody in the city uh, knows lots of things about the former open lord and uh, the press are, are have already been, I've been turning them away this morning before all of you woke up. And of course, Never Ember's friends who are now your enemies might also be interested in coming in and paying you a visit. So just better to keep you all a little bit incommunicado uh, for a little bit. <clears throat> At least until the hangover is gone. Uh, I think um, Isabara and Jacques and Gilles. But, like, does Jacques and Gilles get it? It's like Jacques and Gilles, but French. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you had to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking like a little, yeah, cute little pair of water methods. Shut and you. Anyway. Yes, uh, just as Kabara is back downstairs with uh, her water methods. Probably by this point, yeah. Okay. So uh, I think then that means everybody uh, is either behind the bar or in front of the bar. And Jarvis is like, well, yeah, so uh, first of all, can... You've been gone for two and a half days, uh, and I've heard rumors. I've seen some of the things that have been reported. But tell me, um, what really happened? I've seen the the spin the city's put out, but come on. You you all left to go meet with Jar Laxel and Renye, and and then what? Well. We went to the council meeting. You know, 
no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Like the, the like who is like this uh, Mr. Klanghammer? Very nice. He says he lives oh. here now. Oh, he's he's a dwarf, I think. Yes, I think. <laughs> 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 I mean, he, he's more than just a dwarf. I'm pretty sure, but you know, dwarf. Uh he was in default, and now he's here. That's okay. Most of what I know about him. <laughs> All right. So, um, but you managed to find the dragons, I take it. I mean, yes. I, I don't. I guess I have you briefed Jarvis on everything. I don't know that you've really had time. You're no. Yes. Yeah, but at the same time, Clue is kind also of hung over to do like a right. bunch of briefings. All right. Someone tell me what happened so I can make good decision. Help you make, but you know, good decisions and understand what we're dealing with here. We met with John with my decisions of yesterday still, so... Mm-hmm. Else <laughs> that Shortly after we met John Axel, we found out Clue is definitely afraid of the dark. Oh! It was highly amusing. Uh, he screams like a little girl. <laughs> How did you I, find I, out? <laughs> I've never been in the dark before. I, I do not get how you guys deal with it. It's... How do you just <laughs> not see anything? It's fucking weird. All right, dark so, mantles is how. How did you come across dark mantles in Waterdeep? Uh, a magic. curious magic old lady. lady with magic paintings. Magic. Oh. Oh, well, that explains something. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. And um, he comes, he runs back into the kitchen, sort of like disappears down, avoids the ooze in the basement, um, brings back. A, ma- a, a, a wrapped up in like brown paper, but this thing that looks like a painting, and says this was delivered to us last night. And it says um, with thanks from Renier Never Ember. I mm-hmm. it wasn't. It's addressed to you. It was addressed to the party members. So here, and he sort of like gives hands you Mara the the painting. Perry's this. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's so pretty. <laughs> oh, it makes me so happy! It, it's, and she starts stroking it, like, ah, oh, that bit, that bit, bit. It's, it's still in brown paper. <laughs> she doesn't care. She go and just talk through it. <laughs> okay. do, you, do, do we want to unwrap it and then hang it somewhere, or are you just going to? I'm gonna leave it wrapped for now, and then at some point I will unwrap it and hang it somewhere. It, it's not for Mar. It's for the whole party. It's, like it's a... mine. <laughs> Anybody come like the second somebody comes near the painting, she goes. Okay, I guess what it is will remain a mystery. All right. <laughs> I mean, just until Mars distracted for five seconds, we've got two rogues. It, it's not that mm-hmm. hard to get our hands on that thing. <laughs> Mara hisses at you again. Uh, you can hiss at me all you want. Doesn't change anything. Uh, all right, so um, uh, dark mantles uh, in magic paintings. Okay, that's that's just, right. Thank you, Perry. Continue. Um, we found the old flame of the former open lord. We. Kalein. Kalein. The Ooh, who's informed. Oh, that's my job. Um, but thank you, Clue. I appreciate it. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I, I, keep, I keep track of gossip. That's why I was hired by the Solutions Guild. Um, um, interesting. And, yeah. And yeah, and then we went through her basement into some old ruins, found our way through, evaded a few traps, solved some puzzles. I think I may have got killed by Felvar at one point. What? Um, uh, uh, yeah. But there was a mural magic made him go. Uku oh. Kachu. Right. Yeah. Enchant. Right. Mm. Mm. Right. We essentially tried to not stab him for a while until he stabbed all of us, and then we decided to stab him. And that was actually pretty easy, but. <laughs> you know. Oh, yes. And that let Hibara know that I was a ghost. Uh, uh... After. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. After that, 
we mm. went to we after that we were in the vault where we met this lovely fellow over here. So curious perceptions of time. Um yeah. And I... when you talked to talked to him and we were able to get the gold. Or uh, Chloe's just gonna like it. lean into uh, Jarvis for a second. Don't try to look like charm person or uh, him or anything. Does not work, and he does not. Was that me dropping out again? Yes. No, that was him dropping oh, okay. out. That sorry, was... we got um. It doesn't work. Sorry, sorry. So don't cast charm person on him. Can you say it again? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, don't try to cast like charm person or anything on him because it doesn't work, and he does not like it. Jarvis looks at you with a little bit of surprise, um, but doesn't say anything, just sort of nods, uh, and then looks a little bit over at Clanghammer, weirdly, and then, like, nods again. But yeah, Clanghammer had probably been down there for a few years, so he's enjoying a bit of well-earned freedom, I think. Yes, well, he's, he's certainly getting along with Sippy, all right. And as you look over, um, you see that the Sippies are, like, also shown up now, and... Um, uh, he's he's drinking beer this morning, Klanghammer. He's just filling up sippy, you know, like he'll down it, you know, fill it up again. He's loving life, Klanghammer. He's liking this place. And sippy likes Klanghammer, so it's good. They're a good team. One likes to pour drinks, the other one likes to drink drinks. Oh, so then you, then you came back here. Well, um, that was the Xanathar ambush. Xanathar's? Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of getting fucked. Yeah, and not in the was... fun way. Eh, have I actually? I'm not gonna continue that question. Just yeah, gonna leave it there. <laughs> well, yeah, apparently, uh, Sabathar tried to ambush us. Luckily, one of Jalaxel's spy was in there, and we um, in the vault created a bit of. Yeah, I mean, we were in the vault, and then they came after us. So. But this is where was it? Sorry, the spy was in the vault with you. No, uh, well, the spy was with the with the Zarathar, and they all came into the vault. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So, uh, th there was a Jardlaxel spy in the Xanathar organization. I, I mean, I assume okay. he has multiple, but you know, that's right. what. Oh, that's interesting to know. Ah, thank you. Very useful. Them. Very useful. I mean, know. the spy is still alive, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Jardlaxel again, so. Not doing Xanathar spy things. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So, um, uh, and uh, oh, you survived the Xanathar attack. Good. Mm -hmm. And then we reported in and said we had the gold, or had secured the gold, and how to get to it. Ah. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Well, that explains uh all of the intense. I kind of gave you all your space. When you were here the other night, but uh, it seems you'd been through a lot. But sometimes it's better to wait before asking questions of people. So, yeah, and then your council meeting. How was that? Did I, Mara interrupts and goes, Did I promise to give Jerlaxel gun designs? Oh, shit. Like your pistol Why designs? Did you bring a <laughs> No, gun designs. Uh, think do, pistol, but upgrade. Do, do you know how to design guns? No. Well, but, good luck with that. No, the, the, it, they're from my universe. Do, do you know how they work? Like, kind? on a design level? On a design level, no. On like a how... functionality level, kind of. Mm -hmm. So, if I ask you to describe one of those guns in a way that I might be able to construct one, what would you say? I do not know. I have to think about it. I just remembered that I promised it. You Have you heard of uh, the uh, tinkerers from Lantern? I, I don't think it's a good idea to give these guns um, to anybody. I mean, yes, I think it's a good good idea. Uh, no, it's a bad idea. Good idea, bad idea. It, it, it's an idea. Um, 
only these are like weapons of mass casualties i mean that sounds like half of the spell list let's just say these guns can um shoot a bullet um mm -hmm. multiple bullets within a minute i mean that's impressive if you can name it well the gun is called a well there's two that i'm thinking of there's the gatling and then there's the ak-47 that was a beautiful gun you know that tells me nothing but sure see you, you told me to name it i named it i knew it meant nothing to you and you told this information i have two questions we'll deal with the, the uh, one on this plane i mean i question. said if you can aim it i said nothing about naming it i hate you uh uh, people here might be aware of or heard of the Lantanese. Um, they are the group, they have an island on the, the island called Lantan. They are the ones who, well, they're famous mostly for their um, smoke powder and their, um, oh, shit, <clears throat> what is your gun called again? A pistol. They're mm -hmm. pistols. They also are the same group that made the Nimble Right, that made Friend and the other Nimble Rights. It's very possible if you give the information to that group, they could probably work up some prototypes. This could be pretty dangerous. Uh, second question. Mara just said, from my universe, and none of you reacted. Oh, plain walker spirit. Yeah, that, we don't get it entirely, but it's best to just accept it. Mara holds out her hand to Jarvis and goes, hi. I am the personification of the Horsemen of War. Jarvis looks very, very confused because he, sorry, they are, um, the way that they think about that phrase is like a page, you know, to a knight. <laughs> it's like when you're a horseman too, like you're some sort of like support. But okay, okay. Jarvis is very confused, but accepts it. Plane walker. Is he going to... Okay leave mara hanging like uh, she pulled, held out her hand oh You're sorry like, yes yes well they're they're a little bit like stunned because they're you can they're buffering this is information processing and then they realize they're being rude and um and said uh, uh, i i guess we've met but not formally no it is good to finally get to discuss things with you on a more honest i guess level Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I can see why uh, this group has been. Yes, this, uh, I'm going to need a moment. Uh, continue. Uh, uh, so you went to the council meeting. Uh, oh, right, all right, and then the council made their announcement. Um, oh, I think I, I think I'm going to need something stronger with my coffee. And Jarvis turns around and finds some whiskey. This is a lot for them to process between 10 30 and 11 o'clock in the morning <laughs> uh they give a healthy dose of whiskey in their coffee and well all right um all right okay well let's have a look at these newspapers shall we and see what they're saying so Indeed. on the desk i'm oh, sorry on the bar in front of you there are all of the water deep broadsheets which i actually have a thing for in my water deep DM's guide. So yeah, you can kind of have your choice. There's uh, the Anklet, the Blue Unicorn, the Daily Trumpet, Helliver's Lords and Ladies, Hulber Hulbrandt's Record, Merchant's True Friend, Mount Waterdeep. There's way too many newspapers. Okay, I'm going to narrow this down. <laughs> right. Let's say there is the uh, the Anklet, uh, no, the Daily Trumpet, the record uh the mm, the vigilant how many citizen. newspapers are there there are on this mm -hmm. list one two yeah. three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so why don't we just roll a d16 and that's the newspaper we get well some okay we'll see some of them okay yeah that's fine uh run roll two 
how do you do this? Um, I think. I yeah, yeah, I just do it by one. hand. If you do a hand uh, typing, the roll. Yeah, okay, you can just roll a d6 okay. thing, yeah. Uh, so yeah. the the true water Davian, uh, the true water I think is well it's going to be fuck it that's close enough. All right, so this is a financial paper aimed at the wealthy and it's very condescending toward the unwashed masses. Wait, and, is that the one Hibara got? Yep, that's when you were just rolled. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that the true water Davian has characterized it is they focus pretty much on the money that has been recovered and the um what, what funds it might have been appropriated from and uh the, is this tied to all of the potholes in the city and so they're just kind of like uh, there is some mention of the party but it tends to be uh more like uh, as part of the report of what happened in the council meeting so you know it's first it was like you know the the mention of jarlaxle uh, was seen at the meeting um, and some discussions were had. Uh, rumors had say that there's going to be a shift in policy uh, uh, with uh, Luskin joining the Lord's Alliance. And then they have all like a, a separate article on what are the financial implications of Luskin becoming part of the Lord's Alliance uh, on the economy for Waterdeep. And does that mean fewer pirate attacks? Uh, so it's, it's pretty much all from that perspective, but not really too much focused on your group. Yeah, I mean... She'd read like the first few sentences, and then once it became pretty apparent that they were just talking money, money shit, she'd just like go blah, 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 and just skim the rest of the page for any like important names. Yeah, it, you know, the your party name is given as well as the fact that you are the uh, run, you're currently running the new re newly renovated property in the North Ward on um, Troll Skull, formerly Troll Skull Manor, now the Haunt, Yield Haunt. I should say. It's ye old haunt, not the old haunt, right? The old haunt. The old. Y T H E. No, it, y. it's Y Y okay. E. Okay, all right. Y E is actually pronounced the because the Y is unless you're an American. A form, <laughs> exactly, unless which, you're an American. Which is an old defunct letter that was used for T H. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. yeah. We've appropriated that in America, we just call it ye. <laughs> like we I do mean, a aluminum. lot of people in English also call it ye. It's, yeah. it's an anachronism that most people don't remember, yeah, but it's actually okay. just short for a th. Well, it's a dead letter. Uh, yeah. So just yeah, thorn is a dead letter, and then the y is because the yeah, originally got German type, and it didn't have the thorn, so they needed to be creative, and then the y got just swapped in. Yeah, the, the actual the actual thorn has an extra line on it. Mm, okay. But that got dropped, and now they just use the y, which looks like a thorn, but without the line through it. Aha. Mm -hmm. All right. But... So there you go. Old English letters brought to you by D and D with Christy. Okay. <laughs> So do you want to roll another uh, D16? Someone else want to grab a paper, see what they get? Oh, clue did, sure. but also yeah. while Hibara oh, right. is yes. thumbing through this paper, uh, she sees something uh, and rips it out of the paper and the stuff's in her bag and oh. then okay. goes a long way. Okay, so you picked up uh, um, Blue, the Blue Unicorn, because mm -hmm. I, I, read, I read the numbers wrong. Actually, mm -hmm. Hibara should have gotten the Blue Unicorn, but fuck it, it doesn't matter, it's random rules. Mm -hmm. This is a bitingly satirical rag that mocks well-known water deviants. Honestly, and this is a better situation. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my god. Dying. This one really focuses on the salacious details. It, it talks a lot about, first it starts off with uh, Dagult, and mm -hmm. kind of uh, says, you know, did the former lord uh, steal from the citizens from water Davians and uh, really just sort of uh, like lampoons him as this, you know, philanderer who's now also an embezzler who uh, you know ran off to Neverwinter because he couldn't hack the big city in Waterdeep because we're so much cooler here, like those bumpkins up in Water ne uh, Neverwinter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of that is uh, focused on him. There is some discussion of the water. Lou, sorry, Waterdeep Wazoo's allegations that his son is now banging his mistress um, and they don't, they, they just run, they're like, you know, a, a rag. So they just kind of like run with that story as well. And they mention a little bit about 
the council meeting itself um, that some unknown dwarf was reported to be there and, and you know some uh, also the council praised the work of the adventurers who had uncovered it so there's cover like a little bit more because when they get to your section um, they tell they kind of give the official PR release that the city put out mm -hmm. they don't have much else about like who was at the meeting what was said um, there are some maybe off the records interviews given but not to this like to the financial times yes to this paper no <laughs> right mm -hmm. the city like so uh, when so when they finished kind of like summing up your part then they talk about the fact that your party or your uh, ever since you all have moved into this location there's been a lot more activity the north ward has been seeing a lot more drama associated with this adventuring party come uh, tavern keepers and sort of like you know um kind of like yeah like being a little bit dismissive of not dismissive but so, uh not exaggerating not putting a little bit of stank on it you know like oh these adventurers come in and then they just blow up the neighborhoods and they try to uh you know they end up starting all these dramas um trying to think what else so yeah they're gonna they would they would mention um the street fight that happened that with uh, Ursula Fluxton being taken in, there's also mention rumors that a trial was held in secret by the city on your location as well. Um, but you got preferential treatment because you were you know, maybe was it because they were working on getting the gold back? So that they speculate on that. So it's it's mostly um, like it, it's more embarrassing. It's it's more embarrassing in terms of uh, them going over anything they can find in the police reports uh, on you in the time that they had. But uh, they don't mention anyone in particular by name other than, uh, you know, Erstel Fluxen and stuff. So. Yeah, oh, I like the idea of the Wazoo being the Waterdeep equivalent of the National Enquirer. And that's the newspaper that was decided to try and use to stir up a civil war. Oh, can you I know? read you the description of the Water Wazoo or Waterdeep Wazoo from the, sh the chart here? It's a snorting, sneering at the wealthy broadsheet featuring steamy, amorous reveal and bed um, reveal and bedchamber sagas. I like it. Yeah, that is yeah. the <laughs> Inquirer. I, 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> but think about it. What like? It, I feel like the, the Wazoo is going to be the newspaper that the common man is going to read. Oh, definitely. Yeah versus I mean, anything else yeah. and that is what ward is looking for yeah. look war wanted to mm -hmm. set the wanted to set the masses onto the upper class war, war knows what she's doing i'm well, like I i'm mean, sorry this is this is going to be the this is the the gossip rag that you look at in the like the grocery store aisle yes while you're exactly. waiting mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I mix with my my, ju my best judgments based on those stupid <laughs> news, like magazines. Don't forget about Hillary Clinton and her AIDS flu. Yeah, oh, or when right. Bill Clinton met met the aliens, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. The funny. I, I mean, come on. Boy. Have any of you seen <laughs> Men in Black? Yes. Who knows how much yes. of that is true? <laughs> So it's the funny thing is just like on a meta level is that mm -hmm. I didn't remember that that was the brief of the wazoo. I only picked the wazoo because it was in your neighborhood, but when it, it all went well, what, but then when it all went tits up in, in <laughs> the thing and you never showed back up, at least my instincts were right on what the newspaper would have covered, which is mm -hmm. the salacious, you know, sex yep. story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, synergies. It's all just coming yes. together. It's all one universe. Yeah, like I said, War knows what she's doing. She's picking the <laughs> like she's picking the newspapers that are most likely going to pollute the minds of the masses. Like, but but is it? It's it's the newspaper that's known as the gossip rag that deals in conspiracy theories. Yeah. Well, yes. But again, <laughs> yeah, but again, that's look like, at what country I fucking live in. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's the Daily the Mail. Prone to conspiracy theories are the exact kind of people yeah. you want to reach. <laughs> Yeah. That is very true. It's like the conspiracy <laughs> end of the Daily Mail and the um socialist bent of uh, the Daily Mirror. Yeah. Right. Is that mm -hmm. what the is that the right paper, the Mirror? Yeah, in the, in the UK. Yeah. Yep. Um yeah, no, definitely. Like the Wazoo is sold in the Dock Ward and the Southern Ward, you know, like in parts of the North Ward, but it's uh, definitely out in the um the field areas, you know. Yeah, you're going to get like I mean, if they can buy newspapers in the field ward, but <laughs> yeah, they would be on would be for sale there. All right, so um Belvar got 
you picked up where'd it go oh yeah holbrand's record a bland exhaustive catalog of who was seen where and what they were wearing at the time so in this coverage <laughs> it's it's all about so they had like someone they got a tip off <laughs> yes and uh, so they like describe it like it's a red carpet ceremony you know so they describe it was a snowy you know wintry night with a dusting of snow when uh, the first carriage um you know uh, gleefully uh, and sassily uh, ironic in its use of a hearse uh, going along with the gothic theme of their tavern you know and then it describes each of you like it gives your name uh, that they have for you and then exactly what you were wearing that night um, and they comment on whether or not they liked it <laughs> whether or not you pulled it off then they also describe you know Renier also you know just a little bit looking uh, a little bit wan and tired perhaps from all of the negative press given the scandal scandalous rumors around his father's mistress so they do a little bit of that kind of stuff too and Jarlaxle they have like a whole section on like they have his hat they talk about his cape um his boots you know they just gotta give him a real write-up in there and yeah that's it's pretty much just like a fashion show and you know who wore it best they've got like a picture and on um yeah it, the two pictures are Thelvar and Jarlaxel um roll me a d20 uh Alhana and if Thelvar rolls uh, 11 or higher he won ah just barely <laughs> So uh, they they say, um, you know, hometown lord still um, knows the fashion sense of water Davians. And so uh, like slightly too ostentatious for water deep. Uh, lord Thelvar's classic. Uh, what were you wearing that? Rem remind us all what you were wearing that night. Uh, tuxedo with a cape, basically. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. A little white mask. mask. Mm -hmm. And a little white mask, yes. Yeah, so it's like a um, mask. Yeah, so you you were awarded. You won because you were fashionably flexible. Not only could you in, present in front of the war the uh, uh, masked lords of Waterdeep, but you could then uh, you know excuse yourself to a theater performance and a, a classy after evenings you know party as well. So you won. Who wore it best in Hobart's record for today? Oh, Clue didn't make the list with his pimp suit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, they did go on about the pimp suit, and they said it had a real Doc Ward's feel about it. <laughs> oh, now that is a burn. <laughs> Not real Doc really, Ward's sensibilities. <laughs> I mean, that is where he lives. <laughs> right? <laughs> it is. It's from accurate. where I came from, it's actually pretty upscale. <laughs> I'm really curious. Is there a spot about what Hibara was wearing? Or did they not even register Hibara as like part of the group? Oh, yes. Okay, so remind us what Hibara was wearing. Literally, every, the, literally the only dress she always wears. She looks completely normal. <laughs> Okay. With uh, shoes. <laughs> yeah, they, it's like a bed sheet. They characterize it as as being a very uh, minimalist look, and they sort of attribute it to maybe like perhaps a, a sense of performance art that you were contrasting the richness of the Dockward look and the Northward look to, um, you know, because, you know, you're sort of like giving okay, off. Okay, so they took avant-garde hipster from what yes. she was wearing and not create <laughs> random homeless person. No, no. Okay. No, totally fashion. Like, it's your eat the rich statement, you know, mm -hmm. for the night. Oh, God. I don't want to know what they would have thought, what th they thought Mara was wearing. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to kind of channel a, a something between a water Davian and Meryl Streep from The Devil Wears Prada, you know, in the fashion. Oh, I was thinking like BuzzFeed. <laughs> no, see, I was the, I was but going like, with Joan Rivers. I was going with feed. classic. <laughs> okay. Fashion so, police, come on now. Yeah, they said you know it's probably too bold for your average uh, water Davian to pull off, especially in winter months. But they really applauded your bravery for having such a powerful message in such a subtle way. Habara? Only they knew. <laughs> God. <laughs> what did what was Mara's? Mara was dressed in like a regular born old pantsuit. <laughs> oh, that's right. 
Oh, yes. Um, so yours was uh, described as a, a sort of a, a classic lines designed to both exude a sense of professionalism while still hugging the curves. <laughs> <laughs> see i was going for school marm that's not what they saw <laughs> okay now we've got to hear what perry's got what they, yes what do they put for perry right remind us all because again i i don't actually remember what every single one of you were wearing in the council meeting so please remind me <laughs> the white blouse the black mm. corset and medium skirt and boots Yes, so they a said steampunk look. Yes, they basically described you as being the epitome of the essence of what Yield Haunt really tries to describe. You're really kind of like selling the gothic part of the um the the they they speculated that you were sort of like drawing inspiration from the gothic nature of your surroundings, the tavern, the aesthetics that you immerse yourself in. And uh, tonight you also wanted to uh, really kind of go against notions of convention and contrast with the other members of the party with uh, rocking this really amazing looking skirt, especially when Mara, I think, well, no, Hibara was also wearing a dress. So I think, yeah, you were, we were both wearing just a very simple Yes. Um, and so, yeah, they, they kind of classified this as like, um, is this a new up and coming style in the North Ward, uh, especially in the winter months? It's, you know, it, it's a it's a nice way to uh, shake things up from the traditional when but, but also keeping with with things that are classic. Oh, and speaking of how this slight aside, speaking of how Perry was dressed reminds me um ea have released a new pack for the sims mm -hmm. uh, a modern menswear pack i'm just waiting for people like the quartering and oh. sargon etc to find it because yeah uh skirts for men <laughs> you know <laughs> It's like kilts haven't been a thing for fucking centuries. Yeah, I was about to say that. I was right? like, they flipped their shit, and then I'm just over here like, you know, yeah. kilts are a thing, right? <laughs> That's a gendered male skirt, basically. Yep. Oh, kilts are so lovely to wear. So I free. Think... Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll sh share some pics in the Discord. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really don't understand how anyone can think, oh, like, sexism doesn't exist and, and uh, we don't have a problem with gender biases when when uh, when there isn't clothing gender-free, you know, we're not gender-free, bias-free in our clothing. So clearly, you know, like, there's there's gender equality in terms of, like, what women can wear, because that was yeah. like aspiration to patriarchy, right? But somehow, mm -hmm. again, it's all tied up with notions of fragile masculinity. Uh, anyway. So in general... Yeah, and also like fucking dresses are awesome to wear. Like we watched, we covered that. Sorry, I'm just going to go on a bit of a rant, but I brought this up on the happy hour. Yeah, there was a like now hear this about a, a little boy who's I don't know six or seven loves to wear dresses, and his mom mm -hmm. took him to see like the old queers or something or the old gays. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they were because they all dressed up in dresses, and he got to like spend time with men in dresses and feel normal, and. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was just like, what everyone, what every person, like a little girl who gets to wear a dress, you have a big, you just want to spin in the dress. You just want a long dress that's really flowing and then you want to spin around so it, it goes up. That's all. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's just fun to do. <laughs> Why you deny boys yep. that? <laughs> oh, okay. Rant over. Um, I just want a dress with pockets and um legs oh wait i just want pants yeah, yeah pants. <laughs> <laughs> well dressed in pockets is basically a kilt it, it really is so the many... fact that it took so long for people for men to put pockets back in dresses i did see a picture someone circulated in like 20 2020 or 2021 of a white woman being escorted by the police not beaten to death because white um wearing <laughs> pants and they were hauling her in for violating, like, you know, public nuisance orders or whatever. It's only 100 years ago. It's not that long yeah. ago. Public decency laws, yeah. yes. I would say I, I would be the public nuisance. Be like, yeah. give me pants or give me death. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, go That'd ahead. Be very scandalous back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, have any of you ever felt the chub rub? No. It's uncomfortable. Just want pants. 
Yeah, that's true. Your thighs can do it up together. Anyway, mm -hmm. okay. So, um, do, do are you guys having fun with this? Do you want to do more papers or? I don't mind. It's kind of we're we're kind of you know, having a fun session mm -hmm. tonight. So it depends mm -hmm. if you feel I mean, like yeah. you. So uh, somebody roll. Oh, I can. I did Thelvar's left. left. Uh, there's like no. You already did Thelvar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said Thelvar's Thelvar's was fashion one. Yeah, there yeah. are like mm -hmm. seventeen days. So what happens is it's not like I've written one for everyone. What I do is you guys tell me what it uh what roll your dice. I read which one it is, and I read the description of what the paper is, and then I'm just spinning the story based on mm -hmm. the narrative that I think that paper would have. So, yeah. Um. All right. Maro gets a ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. The Revelers Verithar. Oh, it's a respectable financial paper. So, Again? Yeah, there's well, there's a lot of money in Waterdeep. Um, so this one's similar, tends to focus on the um so what's the other one is more targeted at conservative wealthy people. So this one isn't quite so dismissive, but it does talk about um uh, the money being uh you know, where the money had gone and the fact that it had been in the city under our very noses this entire time. Um, who else may have known about this? Does this mean we need corruption investigations to find out what other financial mismanagement has been going on in the city? So they have a whole section there that they focus mostly on the return of the money and the accusation that Never Ember is, um, is basically being called out by the city as the one responsible. Once they kind of have that, like that's their their big headline section. Then they have a separate smaller report, like you know under the fold kind of thing on the council meeting, and in that council meeting part, they talk about your party, and the fact that you were credited with finding and returning the gold. They also mention that um, according to reports by the city, the full um. Uh, they, they, they're doing uh, they're doing investigations looking for where the money came from and so far it seems that all the money has been accounted for so it seems Aww. that your group didn't steal anything you know like uh, mm. and then there's some speculation about uh, what what kind of you know deal the city cut like was this independent contractors or are they going to get a percentage of the money how are they going to get paid uh, all that kind of thing um, then they also have a little uh, separate section on page seven which is to um so venturers or uh entrepreneurs who are pn2c see page seven so when you get to page seven you open up would you open up to page seven Yes. Yep. All right. So on page seven, when you open it up, it is more of a write up of the, the tavern. So it talks about um, your company and the fact that you've recently opened a business at this address. And then it gives a, a section about like when the building was first built, like ages ago, and some of the important people who had lived in the ta uh, in the manor and then some of the businesses that attempted to be there. And then they have a whole section on covering uh, some other social media, like, uh, sorry, society rags coverage of your grand opening. And because was... heaven forbid these people actually came to our grand opening. Well, yeah, when they mentioned like <laughs> never, they mentioned Volo was there and they mentioned that you have connections with the never embers as well. Um, who else was at the party? And there's like a mix of you know, the dung heaps. I mean, and... depending on. Um... What they're plugged into, they might have also noticed that some members of the uh, Zens were there. Which, depending if they watched like oh, the criminal did, side did, of stuff, did Devil? Uh, Jack, did Devil show? Jack, uh, okay. I, I, mean, I know Yaga was there. Um, okay. But I don't know if Devil was. He might have been. Yeah. Clue would definitely invite him, but that doesn't mean he necessarily had the time. Uh, let's just say he was. It's canon now. He stopped by for a bit. Um, but first, first they mention um, after, like they kind of give the write up on your, um, your grand opening, and yeah, they like a, a mix of people, and they list uh, Davil, for instance, and then the yeah, and uh, the other mentioned people, and then they have a, a section on the Solutions Guild and Omen Drawn opening up this new franchise in Waterdeep, 
and questioning if, uh, with all of the happenings in Troll Skull Alley, is this the future of adventuring, uh, a combination of providing a, you know, of a business with, you know, so they just have like some discussions there about, um, is this a good opportunity to invest in Solutions Guild? Is this the new format of, of adventuring going forward where um, not only do they go out and try to collect money, but they also like, you can do a capital investment in their uh, themed <laughs> like restaurants so that's that's basically it but it, it does give all of like your names and the address and everything about the party and your business mm -hmm. but yeah just remember that pretty much anyone could have been there because everyone fell on that he invited yeah that's true yeah <laughs> like, I, it, it says it was a mix of, of clientele at the opening I mean... from dung haulers to you know uh -huh. follow uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a bar opening. You're supposed to invite people. <laughs> <laughs> so that was um, Re Relver's Verithar. Uh, anyone else want to roll? Or are we? Are uh, you? I think Perry's the only one left. You have a roll. I think I'll roll a d12 since. There's been a number of papers already taken. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Straight talk from the docks. It's the seafarers. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the seafarers. Dark sensibilities, yeah. Yeah. The seafarers <laughs> forum where all dirty truths are told. So this one is basically like this is for this is the sailors version of the National Enquirer. Except they don't like the the wazoo it tries to ride more of a middle of the road like they, they want to be read by housewives in the oh what's the shishi ward i want to say the harbor ward but that's not it the one uh you mean the, like the sea ward yeah the sea ward yes it was close harbor sea uh in the sea ward they still want to be read by those you know like as you know like on the side but it's mostly aimed uh but this one the straight talk from the docks this is just rough and ready you know, uh, salt of the earth type people who put together their own paper for the people. And this one is way more on conspiracy theories. So Fox News. I, I guess, yeah, in that way, but with, I think more of a socialist bent because um, this is for like, this is the, dock the workers for dock workers, you know. More the mm -hmm. weekly world news. Yeah, this is like the kind of shit the capitalists <laughs> won't tell you, you know, the bosses and the owners. Um, it is more, maybe more like, Al, you know, trending toward Alex Jones types things in that way. But um, this one is all about like uh, money turned up and um, uh, they, they are like questioning whether or not there really was a vault. How is it possible a dwarf could live in a vault for three years? That just doesn't make any sense. And um and you know was it really the case that this this money was transported out by never uh winter and then he's been making money up in never uh, sorry never ember and he's been making money back in never winter and maybe you all when you came back from never winter brought the money with you and planted it uh for it to be found but then the story got all spun out and it's turning against him it, it just it's it, it's all over the place this thing right but it does cover the fact that you all were um the the working the class turning, people they're <laughs> turning the freaking gripply gay yes yeah. <laughs> yes yeah you know just because uh they like you know just i'm oh, sorry go ahead what are they turning the gripply what does that gripply. mean uh, the frog people uh, oh, oh. Those are grog, oh, not grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> sorry, they're gr they're grumpy in Pathfinder. That's why. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that, that, that's, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I get. I get it now. <laughs> Coming up, Kermit. <laughs> they're turning Kermit's gay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. It's it's like in some parts of it they get right, but then they just editorialize like way too much. But you know, like they they ask some fair, pretty fair questions like. How is it that the city could not tell people that the dragon staff was missing? And, um, you know, what does Jarlaxle want? The fact that he could have, you know, like you know, held the city for ransom, but he decided to just hand it over. He must be getting something. And the rumors of the fact that Pol the 
Waterdeep is going to change its position and actively move for Luskin. So they kind of like speculate on, uh, on like a, a bunch of that stuff because uh, for sailors, Luskin, you know, uh, being part of the Lord's Alliance and might have to come into line would obviously change their lives a lot, right? So they spend quite a lot of time talking about the Luskin Waterdeep conspiracies, what could be happening there. And that that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, you know, your important you're, you're, question. Did they yeah. appreciate Clue's outfit? <laughs> uh, no. Well, well, they do say, um, I don't know, how, how well known is Clue in the Dock Ward? He's lived there most of his life, um, right? Uh, I mean, no, actually not. Or like since he's been in Waterdeep, but yeah. Uh, I mean, well, he was born in the in the field ward, which is technically not part of Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. Probably got into uh, actually a house in Dockward around when he was sixteen-ish. So, so at like eight years to this. Has he been arrested? There? He's been. Would he have been like arrested in the papers for small petty things, or did he keep a pretty? Uh, I mean. Caught? No. Known about? Okay. Yes. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. All right. So yeah, when they're kind of talking about the tavern, uh, they mention you know that's up in the North Ward, and then these you know like work a day adventurers who are out there, you know, like doing their things. Um, and Doc Ward resident Clue, uh, also now you know part of this um, brave adventuring team. So you get like a a, a one line, but they didn't mention your. They mm -hmm. didn't mention your outfit because they didn't have anyone there at the time to see it. So. Now that's the paper that Mara should be dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mara took one look and went fox and went no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I'm just trying to see um, if there's... Yeah, the, the, the more normal, straight up kind of papers let me just see the nothing but the facts broadsheet more like the the vigilant citizen call it more like the new york times you know like they'll say mr and ms and whatever else uh that uh yeah they give more of a just like a straight overview and again there's in most of these stories you're not the top thing they have their angle whether it's about the stolen money or whether it's about the lord's alliance um the, the one in, in the dock wards was really the only one that questioned uh, why there was somebody in a vault for three years. You know, the rest of them were more just covering all of the other, like, politics between the stolen money and the changing position of Waterdeep to Luskin, as well as Jarlaxle Banray appearing before the Mass Lords of Waterdeep. You know, there's there's a lot of news in that, that story. But you can see now why... Pretty much everyone who's passing by could possibly pause outside your business if they've read a paper today and uh, stare and gawk a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe he is going to take the fashion pages and stick them on a wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can get a subscription if you want. Have it delivered to the tavern every whatever week it comes day it comes out or something. But. So, yes, and if we're done with that, that was fun. But Jarvis <laughs> says, uh, well, uh, yes, so um, I mentioned this to Thelgar, but uh, has some good news and I have some bad news. It's not really bad news, uh, but if you were hoping for a vacation or break, um, sorry, but I kind of kind of need to keep, you know, um, send you on another job right away uh I, i'm but the good news is it's uh it's at a spa H hibara had a look at the brochure earlier today hibara what did you think of the spa um it's more thalvar's thing <laughs> fair enough um all right yeah so uh, jarvis gets out a brochure he said we've had a request well um, earlier in the day before I had to shut the business down because oh right yes yeah. so um, I think it must have happened sometime after the council meeting last uh, evening I received the paper bird from Omen Drawn giving me the briefing on why we were should probably uh, get shut down or shut down and close off the bar to make sure people don't start coming in and poking around the place he said yes uh, we don't really want people bumping into friend 
uh, an endless friend is ready to be seen by the public. So, um, but earlier he had sent me this, which is uh, it's a brochure for a spa that opened up, hmm, I guess now about a, about a year ago in the Sea Ward. Ooh. There are some complaints. Well, he's received a, uh, had a client come in saying that someone that they knew the last time they heard of them, they went to this spa. There are also some rumors that other people have attend have visited the spa and, and then disappeared. Uh, but this is the first time uh, we received money to investigate it. Given that you need to be out of the public eye for the next 24 hours while things settle and fights are had in the newspapers, um, and things kind of shake out, uh, Omen thought it would be good if you all went undercover uh, on a vacation. So this is a murder spa. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Mm, that that makes spa. Sense. It's it could very... be alive, yeah. but are gone. It's 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 very exclusive and very expensive to get into. So most like the, the city of Waterdeep won't just you know can't necessarily they can go in and look around, but they can't. Uh, you know, like in necessarily in like investigate mm -hmm. on their own. Anyway, um, I just put myself down a, an alley that I need to pull myself back from and get back on a more plausible storyline because obviously the police could go. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, they want this investigated discreetly, and so inside of the letter, in addition, was uh, five VIP packages to Ooh, yeah. uh, the restful Lily. And also along uh, was sent this uh, this brochure, and Jarvis sort of like uh, points to a brochure sitting on the counter. Um, quick question: Having lived in Waterdeep his entire life, would a clue have heard of the Restless Lily, or is it like relatively new? Yeah, it's only opened in the last year and a half, and it's very exclusive. Okay, very exclusive. So something you might have like vaguely heard of, but definitely never checked out. Yeah, in, in one of those ways, like it's it's like Cartier or Tiffany. Like you might have heard of it because it's mm -hmm. so exclusive, but actually interacting with it or knowing anyone who's ever bought something from there or visited, yeah, that's just it's what yeah. Which and it's away inside so the city proper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's the water. It's, it's, it's the been fast in a Cartier district. store. Sorry, what? I, I said, uh, you you mentioned Cartier, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've been in a Cartier sh store. Yeah, but only... people like you and me buy, like, keychains there. Yeah, I didn't buy anything, <laughs> but I definitely got dirty looks. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so, um, sorry, what was Clue's question? Yeah, it was definitely, so, uh, in the city, it's relatively new. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can go ahead and give me a roll. Give me a, if you want to do a history roll. I mean, roll for it. Uh... Mm -hmm. That's what the dice okay. are for, so... Fifteen. Oh, okay. Uh, it's kind of what you know. You know that it's for the hoity-toity types. That uh, You've heard rumors that um, people who went there came back with, uh, like, looking better. Like, like, kind of our version of, like, they've had something done. Like, they went there mm -hmm. and they had something done. Yeah, so that's the kind of thing, like, you in the society mm -hmm. papers, they would say, you know, so-and-so visited the, the Temple of the Restful Lily, and she, or you can tell she was, or he been to the Temple yeah. of the Restful Lily. Yeah, they came out uh, looking a bit more than just moisturized, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the um, brochure is sat on the table. Or oh. on the bar, bar counter, I should say. I mean... We can read the brochure, but considering we already... Oh no, it talks have... to you. It is what? <laughs> yeah, it talks to you. Well, now you've got my interest. <laughs> it's just got like, a little... That's the brochure. <laughs> yeah, you pick up the brochure, you look at it, and the mirror first shows your face, and then in the same way, it swims, and replaced by your own gaze is a very beautiful-looking woman who speaks in a soft voice and says, Well met, dearest one. How do you feel today? Uh, I already still kind sure of hungover, Bob. <laughs> kind of hungover still, Bob. 
now very curious. Oh, well, then you should visit the Temple of the Restful Lily where we can refresh your spirit and your body. Sounds great. So what do you guys have down there? Oh, well, we can help you look just like you, but better. And the, the thing swims again. And whereas first, you know, you were looking down at this sort of like hungover, slightly pale looking, you know, barely mm -hmm. brushed teeth look. It's it's you, but like with radiant skin and more defined cheekbones and a bit more fire in your eyes and your hair is like you're standing by a fan. Your hair is just sort of like gently like a vi music video, you know, um, the hair that's around the mirror, you know, just sort of starts to flow like your Mariah mm -hmm. Carey in front of a big fan. Just like slightly pointier horns. Mm -hmm. Yes, everything, but just ooh, a little shinier, a little on more on point. Ooh, looking great there. We offer massages, haircuts, and special magical treatments for our most exclusive guests. Do you have a sauna? Uh, we have water. We have pools. I don't think there's a sauna. We have pools oh. where you can lounge and take in the most healthy spring water that will make you feel as if you've experienced a great restoration. Okay. Wink, wink. Wink. <laughs> yeah, that's a D&D &D joke. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody else want to see what's up? Just kind of waves the brochure around. Mara takes it. All right. Uh, right, so you look in the mirror, uh, you see War's face. Oh my. You're War at the moment? Yes. You see War's face. Uh... <laughs> and then... Uh, War sees this and, um, throws the brochure <laughs> and goes, no! <laughs> Bad brochure. You're having a moment again, Mara. No, it just showed me my face. Yeah. Is it that terrifying to you? <laughs> not, not. Mara go, like waves a hand in front of her face and goes, not this face. My real face. Oh, so your real face is awkward. Got it. <laughs> <sighs> oh, what's all the fuss about? Velva picks up the brochure. Yeah, so, same thing. You see your face, and then a woman's face, this beautiful woman's face to you. Beautiful to you, I should say. The woman's beauty is individualized, so whatever your character sees, kind of, she appears in that way. And says, well met, dearest one. How do you feel today? Uh, uh, well, first off, I'm not sure how she's going to look, because Elval's like a row ace. They didn't see here. <laughs> I mean, he would you can still appreciate have a beauty. sense of beauty, yeah. Yeah, whatever you find, whatever your aesthetic is for beauty. Okay. Uh, uh, greetings. Um, so, uh, what exactly do you do? Oh, well, we just help you be the best you that you can be through enhancing your already given features and looks. So what would you like done? What do you feel? What do you feel like? What do you want to be? What do you want to look like? Do you want to be taller? Do you want to be shorter? Do you want to be bigger? Do you want to be thinner? Do you want to be younger? We can help. I want to be free of this damn curse. She sort of puts a, a finger, you know, thoughtfully to her chin and says, hmm, yes. Well, I can't, uh, that is not on our regular menu, but you could come in for a consultation. Hmm. Sounds intriguing. Yes, you seem see. you seem a bit weighed down. Imagine yourself free of this curse. And then again, there's a swimming and there's an image of you kind of in a full length mirror, but your, your posture is very straight and you're standing, you know, with your legs apart in a sense of confidence and you're smiling. Uh, and again, you've got like 
the windblown hair kind of look and you're holding a drink at a party and you just like look like the set like the the life of a party hmm yes very nice uh, oh, <laughs> we may pop down uh, perry would you like to have a look oh no i'll wait and see what happens when we go there uh, fair enough uh, I think we've seen enough. Um, puts the brochure onto the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the back of the brochure, just um, as the front has like um, illustrations, there's also uh, illustrations on the back. Um, and there's like, um, what's the word? Um, affirmation. <laughs> like at self affirmations. They also have like information on like some of the massages there and the creams and, you know, like. What do you like hot stone massage? They kind of like list some of their services and they give an address in the sea ward. And at the bottom, it says, A mirror is a gateway to happiness, truth, and to accepting ourselves. Silvare Silverstrong, owner, rest, temple of the restful lily. Lilies, sorry. <clears throat> and when you turn it over and look at it, uh, so the client that uh, Omar sent, or the client hired, I'm going to try this over in English. German grammar is fucking with my head. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, no, I have to put that at the end of the sentence. No, I don't. Uh, the client who hired you is looking for Sylvia Silver. Ah, so where did her name go? Shit. Hold on. I have to look at it again. Uh, Silvare Silversong. The owner of the business is the one who's gone missing. Uh -huh. So, yes, you can have some breakfast if you're. I mean, you're you're booked in for a VIP package, which is for three days. Hmm. Yes. Well. By the uh, way, you... oh, sorry, sorry. You finish. Uh, it, yes, yes. Uh, uh, get some breakfast and then we can get ready to move out. Uh, was there anything else? Uh, I don't think so, but then you hear like um, a noise at the front door. Like something is being knocked into it. But not at the street level, like really, really high up. Jarvis recognizes the sound and says, oh, that's that's a paper bird trying to get in. Or a real bird, but it's probably a paper bird trying to get in. Oh, someone opened the window. Stay here at the bar where it could be warm. I'm at the bar too. <laughs> some of these unseen servant yeah. and has that open the window. All right. So yeah, the window's open. You hear a couple more like thunk thunk attempts, and then it just a, there's a pause, and it comes a shoop, swooping in through the window, and uh, lands itself on the bar. It sort of like preens for a little bit, and then it just flops over. Uh, Thelvar picks up the paper bird and opens it up to read it. Yes, inside is a message from your new and bestest friendy, Jarlaxel Banray, uh, saying that he's had a change of plans, uh, that he is going to be staying in Waterdeep uh, for an extra few days in order to meet with various members of the council in, uh, you know, while they're masked but in private to discuss the Arcane Brotherhood and some of the other things. Therefore, he is extending his stay for the next week. And if you want to come and um, anytime in the next like seven days to visit him on his ship to talk to his uh, lieutenant spy about information on the inner workings of the Xanathar lair, uh, you know, a complex, um, you're welcome at any time. Mm hmm. I let everyone else know that and uh, take a seat and wait for food. <laughs> all right. I need a comfort break. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you all have a nice little chat and I will be right back. Mm -hmm. <sighs> 
So, the spa weekend. Uh, no saunas, though. Shame. Uh, they might have a hot spring. Yeah. Clue's definitely going to look for, like, the hottest place in that. In that uh, spa, um, just hang out there as long as possible. Mara looks at Clue and goes, I didn't know you knew what a Starbucks was. What? I, what, is, what is a Starbucks? Oh, never mind. Okay. Clue <laughs> just kind of shrugs. I heard Starbucks instead of um, sauna for some bizarre reason. Maybe I have coffee on the brain. <laughs> I, I mean, it appears so. Uh, I assume there's some kind of celestial gears. That, I mean, no. I mean, if you take, yeah, I mean. Hmm. <sighs> <sighs> so, how have your guys' week been? Mm, not too bad. I went to go visit a friend across the state. Mm. Nice. You were nowhere near the um, tornadoes, were you? No, I was actually as furthest I could possibly be from them I'm without being in Florida. It. Oh, good. <laughs> glad to hear. It. I was just like, Part of me is like, I should check on the friend that I have in St. Louis. Oh, wait, she's a racist. Aww. Never mind. They didn't get hit, did they? I St. thought it was Louis just Tennessee. Hit. Oh, okay. It's longer than I thought it was. I thought it was just Tennessee and Kentucky. No, apparently it was really, really big. So it was like 30 freaking. Um, yeah. All at once. It's like, yep. are you kidding me? I don't know what someone did, but clearly someone pissed off someone else. Right. Got right. tornado on them. And mm, don't know what it was, but mm -hmm. it was clearly big and bad. It, same as whoever decided to piss off whatever water deity and got the 40 freaking earthquakes off the coast of um, Oregon. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. yeah wow. There, there was like, 30, 40 tiny small earthquakes, but they were all like at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right, all right. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, we are having breakfast. Uh, occasionally, there are like knocks at the door, and as you're eating, Jarvis will go open them up and say, you know, there's a sign up at this point, <laughs> like closed until further, uh, closed until further notice. Uh, no press allowed <laughs> on the front. <laughs> that doesn't stop him. Uh, they knock anyway, and Jarvis has to, you know, like chase them off. And occasionally, um, they will uh, send Gorko out the back just to kind of check that the press aren't trying to, like, you know, climb up the back of the building, things like that. They've got, you know, it all under control, basically. But yeah, anything else? Anything anyone wants to do before you head over to the Sea Ward? <coughs> Can't think of anything. Nope. nope. Okay. Right. Uh, today it's James who's working because Parker was working last night, and yeah, James is a uh, like basically like grab some of the newspapers to read, <laughs> uh, as well, and uh, then invites you all. You go outside and all climb into the business your business carriage. <laughs> takes you over to the address in the sea ward the sea ward is i mean it's it's the nicest basically it's one of the nicest parts of town you, it's got a a real kind of mm, upper middle class you know shishi vibe so the, the mm -hmm. stores there are real boutiques all the buildings are really nice with beautiful facades it's just, you know, like cleaner. Everyone there is very well dressed. Uh, they don't really allow uh, people who don't look like they belong to just sit around for very long. And as you wind your way through the sea ward, eventually you come, it's actually kind of it's really surprising 
it's a it's a side street very nice side street they've got you know like some trees even in this area of the city and you pull up next to not that big just very nice looking like three-story medieval you know kind of looking house um it's got a immaculate garden in the front of it it's got you know so it's not on the street it's set back from the street and it says on the front over the arch of the door it says the temple of the restful lilies water deep um but it doesn't look like a spa it's kind of weird it just looks like a house Mm, uh, curious, Bar's uh, gonna curious, uh, blur the tree. You said there was one tree, or no? There's like a couple trees, trees. Like, uh, down this. So, so I'm, I'm picturing kind of almost like a, a narrow or a one way street with mm -hmm. occasional trees, you know, planted um, uh, in different steps, up, uh, distances apart, you know, to create a sense of shrubbery. You know, yes, forest here. So it's not just one tree; they just kind of line the street from time to time. Was there something that Hibara was going to do with the trees? I was going to investigate them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll me investigation. Is it tree? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, what do you want to know about the tree? The trees. Um, if they're young or old, if they're clearly like imported landscaping type deal, or if they were here and the area was built around them like what's their deal yep so they it's a little bit difficult to judge their age because when you kind of go up to them you realize that there is a little bit of magic that is keeping them from overtaking and continuing to grow out but you do get this you know because they don't want to have to pull you know like rip trees out and because they're too big in the middle of the road so they use magic to kind of control them but these look like when you go to feel the bark whatever it's it's they're very old trees they're magically basically being kept on a diet so that the city doesn't have to worry about like having ancient trees in this part of the city even though these trees are probably very very old and have been around in this neighborhood for a long time all right yeah is that everything that's it okay yep. yeah so you're standing um basically there's a kind of iron wrought gate that separates the sidewalk from the start of the property line and through that gate there is a winter garden that you kind of walk through in order to get it to the steps to walk up to the archway where you go into the temple of the restful lilies oh i'm sorry i thought it was the trees lining the walkway no, no, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I mean, in the garden itself. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's These aren't, like, magically maintained. These are just normal, everyday landscaping. But there are some ex more expensive imported things from farther north that are here that do very well in winter and do very well in, like, cold weather. And so they use that to intermix so that um, between the seasons, there's always mm -hmm. something that looks lush and you know like it's so like pine trees kind of think about in that way so there's a, a okay. some mix of of more hardy tree stock from farther north as well as evidence of very delicate southern flowers as well you know from in the warmer summer months that's all okie dokie okay mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the door um, doesn't seem to have a door handle on it. It's just got a door knocker. Guess she just goes up to it and just uses a door knocker. Yeah. So you hear it kind of, you know, echo. Um, boom, boom. After a few moments, the door is opened. There is a very chic looking dwarven woman who greets you. She looks to be, um, you know, like a, a little bit older than middle age. Not quite, you know, like maybe she's been artificially youthened in some ways, <laughs> freshened up. But she's immaculately dressed. Her nails look fantastic. Her beard 
has got, you know, like she, um, down her chin has got a little bit of, it looks like silver thread that uh, outlines the various intersections of where the hair has been braided. It, she's just looking on point. She says, good morning, welcome to the Temple of the Restful Lilies. Do you have a reservation? Do you, uh, do you? Um, here is our um, VIP pass. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, do, do come in, it's quite cold. And she steps out of the way and opens the door and, and allows you to all walk in. What you see when you get in is it's just like the, the front entrance of a nice looking house, but, and there are sort of like rooms, normal rooms off to the side, Ahead of you, though, instead of where there would normally be like a staircase you'd expect to go up to the next floors, instead there's like a big wall with a double set of doors. So you so when you walk in, you sort of face these big uh, wooden double doors, and then there seems to be a waiting area on one side and like an office area on the other in the rooms that are surrounding the foyer. And when you all come in, she says, oh, wonderful. So, uh... Can I have uh, your names and your VIP package tickets, please? And she walks over to a reception desk area and flips open a book and sort of sits down behind it and puts on a pair of very fashionable cat's eye glasses. Uh, gets <laughs> quill out and, uh, yes, your names and uh, you just drop your pass right here. Yes, uh, I am a Thulva, human combat mage. Is that your and last here name is now? My ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Mara, a the second Thulvar goes into his rant, Mara's doubled over. She, <laughs> like, because she's having flashbacks to Thulvar, human combat mage. <laughs> she just, she's just dying. She, she's dead. She looks up at you, Thelfer, and says, oh, of the Waterdeep Mordragains. Or, the, sorry, the Hadron's, Hadron's Folly Mordragains. Uh, indeed. Oh, how wonderful. We haven't had anyone from your family here. I hope you have a wonderful experience. It's always nice to have nobility come by and use our services. Uh, well, there's a very good reason for not having any of my family here. They're all dead. Oh, how how tragic. My My condolences. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's still dying. Yes, and uh, next. The name's I'm Hibara. <laughs> yep. He has my ticket. <laughs> Hibara just says I do. <laughs> I do have her ticket, but the name's Clue. Just Clue. Right. Uh, and Hibara, any uh, last name? I was no. going to ask you if it was a knock -nomin. No, it's uh, the last name. Has to kind of, has to, and a knock namen. Yeah, there's my German seeping in again. All right. Uh, all right. So she takes down um, Hedbara. And it's wonderful if you just uh, step over to the double doors. We'll I'll set you up in just a second. Uh, who's next? I'm Poetis. And the one laughing over there is either Mara or Ryder, depending which personality is dominant at any given time. I... It's <laughs> Ryder. <laughs> uh, uh, just nice to know we're just casually mentioning that the reception is slow. Good to know. Is that uh, T's with two E's or an EA? EA. EA. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and uh, and finally, yes. E -I -O. yes, Mademoiselle. <laughs> Name is Mara Vita. <laughs> she Mara. does like a ridiculous, flourishy, bowy thing. Like, oh. think professional, like, professional, like, um, think Broadway meets ballet mm -hmm. kind of ridiculous bow. Bow. That's what she does. Okay. Uh, she's like, wonderful. Thank you. She's, she's going to then um, inspect each of the ticket, kind of like looking for like the hologram seal, make sure that you all haven't like forge this shit <laughs> no it's authentic and she signs off she's a wonderful um do you have any uh you've got the full vip package do you have any overnight bags no oh your stay you know is for three days you're not going to provide us with 
luxury um, oh well you spy will clothes? you will be provided with um shall we say uh, uh, the bathrobe which you'll wear all around the spa but just uh, for when you you know like brushing your teeth in the morning i mean you can buy those things in the guest shop that's not a problem uh, if this is more of a spontaneous thing just wanted to make sure that we didn't leave any of your luggage behind you mean on a vip package you don't provide those things i know right well we don't provide oh. you with a clean set of clothes to wear after three days you'll just have to wear this again well do, do uh, you offer laundry services because i mean i know other ho fine establishments just as vip as this that offer laundry services I, i'm sure if you talk to um oh, 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 shit name name uh, uh, mm. uh, uh safe yeah, Safe, who manages the temple. He'll be able to sort you out, no problem. It's fine if it's a spontaneous thing. You, you know, we can, we definitely are able to cover it. And again, just wanted to make sure I wasn't leaving anything, uh, you know, particular creams that you use or anything, but everything, you can, you can get that at the gift shop uh, there on site. I just use magic. Okay. Wonderful. Well, then, um, if you're all ready... Yes, you can make your way to the Temple of the Rest for Lily. And she gets up from behind her desk and pulls out a key from inside, like, her bra. <laughs> it's on a chain, you know, around her neck. She pulls it out and walks over to the big double doors. Uh, she unlocks the door and she does some sort of, like, magic ritual as well over it. Um, so you hear when she turns the key, there's a katunk of a key turning but then she does the magic thing and there seems to be like another lock that releases and she said so uh you could just make your way straight ahead until you see the temple and when you get there seth should be in reception all right when uh the woman said make your uh when the dwarf woman said mm -hmm. make your way mara starts made my way downtown Walking past, faces pass, and I'm homebound. Do 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 like um the Terry uh Terry Crews Terry Crews in white shoes. All right, yeah, and then she starts to push the door, like she's pulling, you know, like pulling on the door, and it starts to like then automatically take over for her and just roll open. And these two massive doors, as they roll back, what they reveal is that behind the doors is a forest. Ooh. This is interesting. Indeed. And there's a little walking path that you can see. Um, as you look up the walking path, mm. you can see about a quarter of a mile away uh, a building. Mm-hmm. It's that where we're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. That's the Temple of the Restful Lily. We're just a... And what's this? Oh, we're just... Interdimensional space. Nice. We're just a branch. Um, all and various uh, other locations all open onto the temple. Hmm. Interesting. Well, no point in standing here. Let's get moving. Onward and forward. Yes, ladies first. Age <laughs> just before... Confidently... <laughs> Could just starts walking forward. I guess it's age before beauty instead. <laughs> Indeed. You're I'm not youngest. even close to the oldest person here. <laughs> yeah, but you're older than Mara. Uh, but yeah, not Ryder. Right establish that everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Um, okay, so I've taken you over to what should be the main map. We'll see if. But that was also crashes. Mara taking a pot shot at. <coughs> oh, yep. There we are at the bottom. Yep, at the bottom. That was also a, a pot shot at uh, Clue calling Mara ugly. I mean. Yeah. I know. It crashed. Gotta scroll down. I see nothing. I think oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And it's yeah, right at the bottom. Yeah, roll 20 is being really bad. Um, There we yes. go. Okay, if because it's even just even recording. This is uh, getting some like my pro. I don't know if, if I'm dropping out or you guys hear other people dropping out too. So do, 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 do. please Last on this one. 
don't uh, just go wandering counts. everywhere. Please just stay in the group because uh, I think it's going to be very demanding. No throwing up on my carpet. Move my character can wait for this, but I can't move my. Oh. I can't move. Whoa, oh. I can't move it. God, I really hate this new dynamic lighting requirement that they put. I feel like ca canceling my subscription just so I can get back to the free one that's only. Where can you move yours? Or did you get a new one? Uh, all right, the other way, this is I'm getting, uh, just changing it to one. Yeah, the God damn it! It will be right. Right back, nope. I got a dog. All right, all you're dropping out, and then they're all, like, coming in at the um, same time. Don't? Nope. Maybe she locked the vision star mine. I went through, I, I thought I went through personally and customized Well, I just created this. Oh, that's the DM. I didn't know that. Yeah, but... it's telling me my band work network, my band, my network bandwidth is low, but literally all I did Ooh, was change dynamic lighting. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can just turn it off. I think. Can we? Can you all Should just. Be able to... Can you all but just. Yeah, you can save dynamic lighting to the. Eat. Yeah, Eat. This is ridiculous. All right, I'm going to turn off dynamic lighting. Yeah, I ran again. Fair enough. And where exactly? Yeah, my All right. What you do is so oh. that it has the correct vision, so you okay. make sure after it's token selected, open up the sheet, go to buy one info, and then there should be a safe token button, but I don't see it, so it's probably a DM only thing. All right, so what, what you guys, on the edit? I, I no. thought, can you all move yourselves um, Yeah. Because I see two Elvars, be two Havars, two Maras. But you can save your token settings to the sheet and then it keeps those settings. Okay, Mike, I had to turn off dynamic lighting. It just mm. broke my computer. Totally broke it. Uh, and so, why Fair am enough. I seeing two Thelvars, two Mars, two Hibars? Because, because we because. couldn't control our tokens. Yes. <laughs> I, but, um, all right. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so now you see how you guys can now see everything? Yep. Just, can mm -hmm. you just pretend you can't? <laughs> yeah. I just see I'm it. blind. No. <laughs> all right, I'm back. Yeah, this is frustrating. Like you guys were like uh just dropping in and out and it, like yeah, this I need I mean, it's too much for my computer to handle this stuff. So, anyway. Technical Don't put like... it in it early and I try and get my week set up to stream this next time. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind if you could take that over, that I would love that. And you can even do it on the Twitch channel, I guess, if cuz well, I guess we'd have to talk to the rolling left people, but we're also lefties playing D&D, &D, so it all fits. Um, but it's just, um, yeah, this is ridiculous. It's very frustrating. Yeah. Anyway, uh, right, right, right. So yes, you're actually, I mean, I'm putting you outside the front of the temple because we're there now, but really you're still stood in the doorway. Uh, so you haven't left yet. And, and the Lor uh, Loris, uh, sure, she introduced herself. I didn't say, but she, she's Loris Niss. Uh, she's just sort of like, you know, taking in your reactions. This is one of her favorite parts of the job is when newbies come for the first time and they realize <laughs> what this place is. Uh, so she really appreciates it. She gets a little, like, thrill of seeing your amazement every time. Um, but yeah, just walk this grass there when you walk out, uh, when you step through the doorway. Mara yawns. Like, hey. not surprised. Yeah, so it's like about a quarter of a mile, we'll call it, a walk from where you are to the buildings. Mm -hmm. Then we walk to the buildings. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, so um, I guess everyone want to give me a perception check? Um, I mean, does my 24 passive perception... Uh, not on this, because I, I know okay. what you're looking for in this. Okay, right. I was thinking maybe Hibara. Uh, is wow. my shit Mara did not open oh, wait, I get to use my lucky traits. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yes. Ooh. Be lucky. Um, my uh, sheet's not opening. I'm refreshing real quick. Yeah, Give yeah. me a second. 
Mara has the power. You do, again, randomly, because you shouldn't, but that's what... <laughs> your character yeah, shouldn't. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed recently, once you hit the edit button on your sheet, it don't reload properly when you exit the edit uh, thing. Yeah, because it's. I just pressed refresh, and it sent me into the Dragon Heist game, so... Something uh, fuck it was up. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. Uh, might have been because I opened it up to check Gorko's sheet for a second and maybe without it. Oh, uh, yeah. It dropped it back down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, perception. Oop. 19. Average roll. Yeah. So, um, weirdly. Mara, and also Clue, you get a sense of where you might be right now. Um, you would swear... Hello? Yeah, you would swear that you are currently in an ancient grove in the high forest, somewhere southeast of Silvery Moon. I definitely know what that place is. <laughs> Mara has no fucking clue. Yeah, it's so weird that you two, but but basically, like you are um, in some ancient like elven wood. Hmm. Hibara hasn't been here though. She's like, it's not enough things to set on fire. <laughs> Hibara, she was paying Hibara attention to a butterfly. In the woods, no yes. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I mean, I actually don't know where it is on the map, but I'm just going to say that it's more like summertime here. <clears throat> so we're going to play, mm -hmm. we're going to keep it that way. And I yeah, think it's, it's to the southeast. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's south. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, southeast. Uh, most things mm -hmm. are south of Waterdeep, yes. to be honest. Yeah. Southeast of Silvery Moon is what my notes say. Uh, and so your, your coats now are getting you're really getting warm so you can kind of take those off and and put them over your arms very this is very narnia <laughs> way you're stepping through the wardrobe and into a different part a different world it's a pleasant day here it's the same kind of time period of day and you walk up to these magnificent uh, well what you see first is like, yeah, two buildings are seen. Well, there's one behind, which you, depending on. I think you come from the east. Yeah, so you can kind of see that there are three buildings. But the way that the building is set up, you follow the path, and the path leads you to this area right here. That that big door. I'm going to see very quickly if they say. Uh, do, 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 do. Nope, nope, nope. It's mostly just. Imagine a two. Well, no, it's it's one story, but it's very, very tall, shall we say. Stone building. Think ancient Greece. Think, you know, temples. It, 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 but it's much better kept. But it has that sort of like door columns and very clean lines, use of geometry. Uh, oh, and it gives the impression of, of openness. When you kind of look into the windows, you can see into the windows in, that there's a, like large spaces inside. And there's really mm. very big double wood, wooden double doors there that are very intricately carved with a lilies theme. And as you approach the temple, just the faint smell of lilies just hovers in the air, kind of like an air freshener, but not quite as overpowered. Like not when you just do the air freshener, you know, like when it's, and it's still a little bit misty and damp. But like when you come back 20 minutes later. I'm going into way too much detail about air fresheners, aren't I? Anyway, that's kind of just a hint of Lily on the air. Uh, how relaxing. You guys uh, ready to get this day of relaxation started? <clears throat> Not that I expect us to do much relaxing, but uh, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I know we're supposed to investigate, but I can't wait for like day two and three, right? You know, it's, it's been a, it's been a hard couple of weeks, you know, just get that first spot in before we start doing fucking work again. Hmm. I suppose, but that uh, doesn't uh, stop us finding out what what while we can but indeed shall we then 
<laughs> just kind of like throws open the doors like as dramatically as possible. <laughs> you just burst on in. Diva Clue is back. Hi. You know it. Now this place is really, really stunning. Um, they've carried through. It's imagine a mix of you know, like we talked about. I talked about the Greek columns and openness, but then also there's uh, mosaics. The floor is tiled with just the most beautiful like nature scenes. So if you can kind of if you picture ancient Roman mosaics that were very elaborate. It, people that's the sort of vibe that's going on on the floor and marble on the walls and when you walk in you can already start to hear a fountain bubbling with water there's just sort of like light music on on the air around you and still the smell of lilies when you walk in there is a, yes a human male behind the desk he has, oh, actually, I didn't really look very closely at his, uh, oh, I can't really see. Looks like, uh, oh, uh, a dark hair, and, what, well, I have to look at this, I have to blow this up, like, 180%. Oh, it's just like a, uh, okay, I see. It's Which generic. icon do you use? It's a more generic one. Right, so I want you to, like, imagine a concierge at, a very dapper concierge at a hotel, or any kind of restaurant or establishment. He's not wearing, he's not wearing a, a tuxedo per se, but he's wearing a, a very, very sharp business casual, shall we say. Because, you know, it's a spa, right? So you kind of have to walk that blend between professionalism, but also not out making everyone, reminding everyone of work. Hold on a second, I just need to clear my throat. Okay, back. He stands up and says, welcome to the temple of the restful lilies. I am safe, and I'm here to make sure your stay is pleasant. I received a message from Loris that all of you are here on our VIP package. Welcome, please come in. Thank you very uh, much for having us. This place is lovely. Love the murals. Just, oh, thank you. General vibe. <laughs> Well, we find that surrounding ourselves by beautiful things sometimes helps inspire the beauty within. Hmm, indeed. Uh, exactly where are you, by the way? Oh, well, yes, um, this is the Temple of the Restful Lilies in the, uh, in the high grove, in the high, in, in the high forest. Where are, are you coming, where are you, which branch of ours are you coming from? Uh, we are from Waterdeep. Oh, how wonderful and exciting. Yes, very, very new there. Well, uh, we hope to give you a good impression. It's, it's a, it's kind of a kept secret between the customers exactly how the, the spa works. It, it kind of stops people using us as a way to get around actually moving, going over to Silvery Keep. You know, we don't want people just sort of showing up and then not using the services. So, um, yes, please try to keep it uh, quiet uh, and exclusive. But, uh, uh, yes, this is uh, a different part of Faerun than Waterdeep. I mean, we know this by the weather. Mm. Uh. Yes, um, can we take your coat and anything else uh, for you? And sort of <sighs> collapse his hands and two uh, people come over um and sort of like offer they say well we'll we'll put them in the um in your we'll st we'll put them in your assigned rooms if you'd like mm -hmm. but uh first i'd just like to explain would you like some tea or coffee we have um lemon flavored water we have fresh mint if you wanted a mint tea uh also some lemongrass what, what would you you know and some can i get you some you must be a little bit tired after your walk can i get you some drinks Oh, minty sounds lovely. Excellent. excellent. Uh, what do you guys want? <laughs> well, have a glass of wine. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'll have, um, is there by chance any way that you can get me a cucumber water? Of course. Would you like that with or without the seeds? At the bottom. 
just chop up the cucumber and put it in the water. You don't blend it up. Oh, no, we just wanted to know if you want it de-seeded so that the seeds don't get in your mouth. Oh, we do no, de-seed I want, like, the cucumbers. I, I, I do not need a de-seeded cucumber. I like, Absolutely. like, just the half, like, little pieces. Not, like, don't dice it. Just slice the cucumber. Sliced with seeds. Shaken yes. or stirred? <laughs> do I look like James Bond, you son of a bitch? Cucumber water, mint tea, glass of wine. Was that a red, white, or rosé? Uh, oh, rosé. Fuck rosé. Right. I can recommend the house rosé, which is not a house rosé you can find anywhere. Uh, it's, it's delicious. I have a few bottles myself. Uh, anyone else for refreshments? I'll just have some normal water. Okay. Well, we've got wonderful fresh spring water here, so... You should... Tr is it uh, water? It is water. Mara and looks at the water. Uh, Mara looks at Hibara and goes, "You should really drink cucumber water. It tastes delicious." I don't know. It seems like a whole ordeal with you, cucumber water. Well, they don't. I, I don't trust them to make it right. Like de-seeding a cucumber. And Mara just kind of goes, "I don't get it." <laughs> okay, I guess I'll have another of her cucumber water. Two Yay. cucumber waters. Well, they, they did give you the choice, Mara. It's not like, oh, it's our cucumber water comes with no seeds. It was, do you want it with seeds or without? Some people are different. That's all. Mara glares at Delvar. A, B, conversation. See your way out. Sean just gives a little titter. One of those polite laughs. <laughs> Oh, um, and, uh, for, for you, he looks at you, Perry. Uh, I'll just go over tea if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, black, green? Black. Black. Um, would you like Earl Grey? Would you like Assam? Would you like Oolong? Would you like... Earl Grey. Say? Earl Grey. And, and, uh, and that was everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he um sort of like passes that order on, and says, "Well, is I I think you are first time guests here. So again, welcome. Your drinks will be right up. But uh, I'm really, it's with a VIP P package. You get everything. So let me tell you a little bit about the services that we offer here, and then we will escort you to your private rooms, and then you can change into your bathrobes. Um, no street clothes are allowed outside of the foyer and the guest areas. In the rest of the uh, area, you have to wear either um, some sort of swimwear or your robes. Uh, we keep it temperature controlled so that you'll never be uncomfortable, so don't worry about that. And at this time, the drinks come. And yeah, uh, all of you get your drinks. Those of you who had the tea and the water, right? So not the wine. Um, uh, there's a little bit of a slight bitter undertone to it. Uh, the water here. <clears throat> it doesn't, it's not, um, it's not like sulfur. It doesn't put you off. But you know how just like sometimes water tastes different? I don't know. And in mm -hmm. this case, it, it just kind of has a like a, a kind of a, a a slightly sour undertaste. So, hmm. so it tastes like lead. No, I don't. I don't know. I mean, lead. I don't like lead. So I don't know how it does lead taste bitter? <laughs> like, I mean, I've never had lead, but I've generally yeah. heard it's like slightly Swedish. Mm -hmm. Wait, depending like, on well, Swedish, like the Swedish chef. No, Gibor, like, Gibor, no, Gibor, Gibor, Gibor. no, I know, but just making, I'm just playing. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> yeah, it's lead, lead in water. Uh, I think well, it's it's specifically lead acetate. That's like sweet, but well, that one's I'm... like supposed to be super sweet. But I like mean, it's uh, it's not actually that. that sweet. Like it's it's sweet enough that you like it. Sometimes was sort of used as a sweetener, like in ancient times when people <laughs> didn't know about lead poisoning, but. Like, if you compare, like, lead acetate to sugar, it's not nearly as sweet as sugar. I was making sure? a joke, but thank you. <laughs> That's what happens with this group. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I try to make an Americanized joke, and it goes over everybody's head. So as you're sitting and drinking, Sean also hands you, seems to be, like, a, a card, a price list when you look up 
closer at what's on it. And in there, there are just various services listed. And Sean says to you, is it, I keep wanting to say Sean, but it's Saith. Sorry. It's, it's, I want to, yeah, it's S-A-E-T-H, Saith. Saith starts to explain, well, with the VIP package, uh, everything is included. So anything here, like for instance, well, here at the Temple of the Restful Lily, we offer many services and treatments that you can take advantage of with your VIP package. You have access to all of the services and all of the treatments. Normally, entrance to the bathhouse costs five gold piece per person. Um, but for you, you can go in and out as you like as VIPs. That includes the use of the enchanted baths, um, a comfortable robe, which you can either keep in your room or there are ones provided for you in the changing areas. And you, in your changing area, have a lockable trunk to store your equipment, your other things. Uh, if, but those are mostly for our daytime guests as, as overnighters. You can go ahead and leave your things in your room. Obviously, no weapons are allowed on the grounds, uh, no armor. So, you know, you'll need to be in some sort of swimwear or your bathrobe in order to access the services. <clears throat> Meal times, again, also included in your package. They are in the... Uh, 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 here at the Temple of the Rest for Lily, you can have what meal you want when you want. If you submit the order to the kitchen, if you want breakfast at 8 o'clock in the evening, that's fine. So for you, basically continue, consider the kitchen open. Uh, anytime you get some hunger, or you're hungry, you want to have a bit of a nibble, just either get one of our members of staff to take your order and submit it, or you can wander to the kitchen and give them the instructions and where it should be delivered. In addition, we have a barber and a hairdresser on site. So if you are interested in getting a haircut, shave, you can do those. We provide waxing services. Whatever you want waxed, our professionals know how to take the hair off. And as well, you can book in for massages. Those are usually pretty high in demand, but with a three day stay, you know, you can book, book that for the next two days in the morning uh, should be no problem. Might have a bit of a problem squeezing you in tonight, unless you like a very, very late night massage. Uh, but um, uh, those are all, those services are also available for you. Manicures and pedicures are available at the beauty salon that's attached to the building. Uh, however, for those people who live a bit more rough and are a bit more demanding with their feet, uh, if you have very horny toenails or, you know, very big problems, you might have a, a little bit extra on your pedicure just to, because of the time and equipment needed. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, and of course, of course, the garden. You have to see the garden, which is absolutely a lovely place to sit and relax. But we are not only a place of pampering and self-improvement and relaxation. In the garden, uh, twice a day, one of the current one of the owners of the temple, Azirsa, does work us. In fact, she's got some going uh, in the next hour. I think you could maybe go over there. She leads some calisthenics, and of course, to provide our customers with a sense of more than just the gratification of a hard job done. We also are providing some incentives with magic potions for those of you who want to be a bit more competitive with your health. And uh, not today, if you're on the VIP package, but tomorrow morning. I strongly, or I warmly invite you, I should say, to have a conversation with one of our other business uh, owners, whose name I have to look up. Sorry. Where did she go? Um, da -da -da -da. Yeah, oh, I have it in my note. Um, Morgana, who will tell you about what our temple is really known for, and those are our very exclusive, very expensive magical treatments where we can help shape you in a more permanent way than a massage or a haircut. Um, however, um, that is something that the owners discuss with the customers. And for each of you, can VIP packages, each of you could get a magical treatment for free. So, uh, any questions before I show you to your quarters? Can we transfer magical treatments to other people? No, no. And um, these are very proprietary and exclusive 
two. No, I mean, if I don't want one, can Perry get two? Uh, I, 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 I will have to ask the management for that. Normally, um, we, uh, I would have to ask the management, but I'll put in the inquiry immediately, and I will personally make sure that you have an answer by the end of the day. Okay. Any other questions? I'm trying to think of anything right now. Excellent. Well, then, follow me, and I will take you to your rooms, uh, and... Oh, my mouse! Where'd you go? There we are. Now that it's not taking for freaking ever, it's just usual, normal, roll 20 crap, not the... <laughs> um, extra annoying roll 20 crap. He leads you down in through this way, so you kind of... Uh, I don't want to follow along to through uh, this area um after the lobby so by the way i should uh yeah, yeah no that's right i was gonna reach out oh the only thing i meant no, no i didn't miss anything from the room description before we're fine so um the changing rooms a corridor beyond the lobby runs between two rows of curtained cubicles where guests can change out of traveling clothes and armor each cubicle if you were to kind of peek into it has a wooden stool while two Different sized white robes hang on hooks, which one is a lower hook for like halflings and human size. And then there's a kind of like, a, let's say it's like a, a small uh, robe hanging there. And then up a little bit higher is one for more like tieflings and half orcs and things, which is a much more of like a, a larger creature. Uh, as well as you can see that there are wooden trunks with locks in each of the rooms. And then, yeah, Saith walks you up to uh, T5, which you can't see, but I can. <laughs> okay. And as you push through the double doors to get to this area of the spa, you see a polished floor. I'm oh, sorry, a polished marble white. A floor. I missed the word. Very important. A floor of polished mar white marble surrounds a large central pool of steaming turquoise water in this large open-air bath. Stone pillars stand along outside... <laughs> Wording is hard. Stone pillars stand along the outside wall, sculpted with relief carvings of a woman. Um, anyone, anyone who wants to can roll religion at this point. Okay, Mara, again... I don't know how you know this shit. We shouldn't know this shit. Belvar. <laughs> Vara, yes. So other than Perry, I think, uh, you now recognize the female face as a traditional depiction of Sune. Hmm. Who is the goddess of, like, beauty, love, and getting it on. I actually was a, in my other game, I was a worshiper of Sune, and I looked into it, and, like, they have an annual fuck fest. Like, it's, it's discreet and stuff, but they're definitely a Bacchanalian kind of group. I, I liked that. Uh, right, and you also can see, you don't see them on the screen here, because I don't have time to drag NPCs. But you also see a collection of people hanging around the pool. And, yeah, uh, okay. So, um, let's see. As you walk by... You see, uh, hanging around by the pool, a drow man who is um, having a conversation and, uh, and a perception checks, uh, again, from everyone. He is having a conversation with a human man and wife looking to be a little bit higher than, uh, sorry, higher, a little bit uh, older than middle-aged. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, Mara, you're gonna peep this. Actually, I think uh, with your passive perception clue, you'll yeah. be able to pick it up. So I'll give also, you that. Also, like depending on how he's sitting, I might just be able to read his lips. <laughs> True. Uh, we'll go. We'll go with that. Mara literally just moseys on over. Yeah, that's fine. This guy sits next to them. <laughs> How not she explode yet? Just fully clothed into the bath. <laughs> Yeah, and so what you overhear, kind of drifting 
into your ear as you're walking over Mara and, and, and Clue. You can't kind of, it just sort of gets picked up by you unconsciously. He's saying, uh, the, the drow is saying, well, you know, I, I do run Luskin, and so I have quite a lot of pull with uh, all of the, the pirate families, the ships that are there. You know, and... Uh, he's not wearing a hat, is he? He's not wearing a hat. Okay, um, what do I need to roll to pull his hair? <laughs> you, well, you have to go up to him first. Oh, well, that's Mara, what I said. Mara hears oh, him say, I run... Um, when The second Mara okay. hears him say, I run Luskin, Mara goes, Daddy! And, okay. like, charges at him. Full force. All right, so this, this would be at the same time for Bara is trying to pull. <laughs> okay, now things have got even more creepy. <laughs> Why? Uh, the slight hand. All right. So I mean... first of all, I need um, Mara. Now that you heard, that was your to hear it. Now I I need you to do. It's gonna be really easy. I need you to do a perception check on the <clears throat> drow who's saying this. That ain't Jarlaxle. That's not Jarl Axel. War, war doesn't care. War, war okay. does not care. Okay, okay. War, is, uh, war is doing this solely yeah. to fuck up his game. Okay, it, it's not a Jarl Axel, but okay. Um, or it's, oh, the, the, the Drow's game. Okay, yeah, same thing for mm -hmm. her, Bara. As you're getting closer now, you know what Jarl Axel looks like, so it's a very basic perception Yes, but check. we also know Jarl Axel can change his appearance. That's so. true. Yeah, that's With why she's hat. trying to grab his hair. Okay, all right. Do you want to still do a... Just do give me a perception check, just to see if you... You're just so excited about it or you actually notice yeah this doesn't look anything it's not even as you know like not the right height God not the right body Mara. shape oh, but I mean, you can pull on the hair to that, that's what she i know she's like sees him but she's like that's not him mm -hmm. or maybe it is him <laughs> <laughs> all right sleight so, of hand for that yeah sleight of hand see how you do meh all right, I'm going to just roll him a d20 to see if he can, uh, like, on a dexterity saving throw, dodge out of the way. Yeah, he manages yep. to, like... Yeah, but he also has to dodge out of Mara, who's, like, full-on tanking at towards him. Yes, and at this point... Yeah. At dis what? Disadvantage? Give him disadvantage, because he's got Mara. Yeah, he has to deal with Mara. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yeah, you yank his hair. At this point, Saith is running over. Uh, and calling over, like, what looks to be now, like, security, um, and is rushing over and saying, so what is, I'm sorry, is there a problem here? Uh, at I this think point, his hair is perfectly the, fine. <laughs> it's just this, normal hair. Yeah, it's just at normal this, hair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> at this point, Thelva walks up and is like, Jarlaxle? My no, name it's not is, him. My name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare to die. Oh, what is wrong with you? Oh. <laughs> the Safe second like, the guy... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Mara, He's like, just gonna sit next to her that Drow was talking about and just starts flirting with her. <laughs> like, uh, so hey, how's it going? Switches. And Wait, so wasn't it's it now, a married couple? It yes. was a married couple. He's sitting on the wife. <laughs> 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 so the second the uh the tour guide comes over war switches so it's now mara like trying to like i don't know what but this poor drow all of a sudden she <laughs> he lied he lied i thought he was but he's not he lied uh, safe motions over for the security to like corner like to like kind of like surround you and like you know, soothe you and and start walking you toward the <laughs> like, like, just uh, like i don't know these people um like they came in at the same time as me i have no, I have no idea who they are really they're <laughs> weird people oh, mara, so mara is now like clinging onto the security guard going <laughs> that drow he lied he said he was and he's not <laughs> All right. Yep. So that that little scene is like you know happening. Things are calming down. Uh, the drow is standing there, just sort of you know, bluffing, basically, at this point, just sort of like watching it all. Safe is like, is a is there a problem? Is everything okay here? Uh, did you do we need to provide different times for everyone to use the pool? Is everything all right? Both the. Uh... Uh, Mara's getting guy. walked away. Mara's getting walked away. So yeah. So okay. what are the rest of you doing? Uh, Hibara's leaning closer to the drow guy. <laughs> he's, 
he is obviously like shitting his pants um because you with your perception you like you can read him um and he is just gonna try to bluff his way out of this uh so he doesn't he just uh kind of ignores you even though it's so obvious that you can't be ignored but he's just uh, well i mean she's flat out she's flat out telling him you shouldn't pretend to be the pirate Uh, especially not the infamous pirate king of luskin uh you could get yourself into a lot of trouble how dare you impugn my (laughs) my legitimacy who are these rabble safe and these these look like a bunch of of riffraff right, right off the streets of water. <laughs> hey, I, go- I am Lord Selva Mordregain, a personal friend of Jarlaxo. Mm-hmm. Kind of like hey, just goes, a bit. That's easy for you to say random person, right, Lord Jarlaxo? Winks. All you could hear from like where Mara is being walked off to, he's supposed to be mad for him with another woman. <laughs> He's a liar and a cheat, my honor. <laughs> um, Saith looks at uh, you and looks at the drow and looks back at you and looks back at the drow and says, um, Well, our client here has paid for our services, um, who he may or may or not be will probably not matter for your duration. So, um, maybe... Are you sure he paid and he just didn't take Charlaxel's bot? T- take his bot? His spot. spot. His spot. His ticket. <laughs> his reservation. Ah, oh, well, uh. I will look into this. Um, Mr. Banray, please feel free to continue to use the services. I know you paid in cash when you arrived um but um we'll just clear all of this up to make sure that the recommendation you gave goes out under the proper name right and the drow just sort of nods and uh skulks off Uh, by the way, I did not put that in there. In this Candlekeep adventure, it reads, <laughs> a drow <laughs> posing as Jarlaxle Banray, the leader of the famous mercenary band, in the hopes of obtaining discounted treatments, is... <laughs> um, is it... to be him. <laughs> yep, the imposter's disguise is easily detected by anyone who met the real Jarlaxle. I just thought that was hilarious, so I had to put that in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Crossover. Tie-ins. You know, it's the same. Mara thing. is actively... Like, the second she watches him go off, she, like, switches back into war, shrugs her shoulders, and goes, I'm good, sir. You can fuck off. <laughs> All right, so... You really do not have the attitude for this kind of place. <laughs> so after that drama, after that <laughs> telenovela drama, uh, Saith walks you... Um, actually, how do you get... Damn it! You have to go through the bar to get to the... Uh, yeah, okay, bedrooms. we're gonna... Yeah, so basically, we're going to get you over here anyway. You're going to, each of you going to get a room. It's 10 o'clock, right? So mm-hmm. for the rest of this session, let's say that, yeah, it, without incident, the rest of you then get to the location where your chambers are. Each of you can take your own room. And Saith reminds you again that once you leave this area, now that you're here, you have to be in some sort of sporting wear, like you know, a swimsuit or shorts and a t-shirt or something. Uh, No weapons, no armor, um, and you can leave everything in your rooms. I think that is where we will leave it for tonight, since it is straight up 10 o'clock. Fair enough. I'm still surprised one of you didn't just tackle Mara to find out what magical creature Renier has for you in the painting. I mean, we'll figure out eventually. Yes. <laughs> Here I thought I was going to be so excited to give you guys your there's, painting. And, there's but... two options. He, he gave us the painting like the earlier. Oh, had he? Oh, okay. Yes. I forgot. Let's see. It, it was, was just me being um, doubled. It was, yeah. So it was, whatchamacallit, it was, um, it wasn't a displacer beast like Mara wanted. It was the Oh, other the dark thing. mantles. Mm-hmm. The dark mark. Yeah, he couldn't get you the dark mantles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I was, you see, you shouldn't have reminded me because I was going to give you a displacer beast because I forgot I did that. But do you want a displacer beast in your bar? 
No, I, I, I can hold on to the dark mantle for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mainly because Mara may or may not use it if Clue gets pissy at her. So there's only one painting. Yeah, it's just the, just the one painting. Yeah. Okay. I was. Yeah. Mara, I sort of... Mar, Mara's actively going to keep that just uh, just a troll um, clue at this point. <laughs> See, I had in my head, I had already put it like over the mantle in the fireplace, and then at some point there was going to be a bar fight, and y'all were going to activate it. <laughs> like as a defensive. yeah see you know that's not how it's gonna go it's gonna have like mara's gonna hold on to it and just like randomly keep it on her person on a regular you can't walk I mean, how big is this painting it's like a... i don't think you can just, no. just put it in your pocket you could strap it on your back and walk around with it strapped to your back it's that big <laughs> i mean it goes where above the mara fireplace all, where, where does mara keep all of her weapons we don't know <laughs> i mean i thought we established it was in her hair <laughs> exactly <laughs> She has a staff and an active longsword in her hair. There's not like it total totally possible for her to have an active painting in her hair. All right, this seems like a good place to leave it. In case Javi does is able to join us next week, and the and his character sheet is all set up, and he will just I fixed be his character sheet. Brilliant. Um, that's well, fantastic. Well, I mean, I think I think it's as much as you could. I did right? what yeah. as much as it looks like that he tried doing. Mm -hmm. I fixed it. Like he didn't have his background in it, but he had the proficiency so that background oh okay you know, so you just dragged it in yeah perfect perfect um yeah so then we will pick up from there thank you guys this was a really fun session um it was all, all that whole thing with the newspapers all of that was me just improving in order to fill a time so we didn't like, get too far into this adventure in mm -hmm. case hobby this is perfect having you guys on location in your rooms but not having explored much but still having a bit of drama with the fake jarlaxle mm -hmm perfect amount of D&D &D for one session. So, yeah, until next time. It's goodbye yeah. from me and goodbye from the party. Say goodbye, party. Goodbye, goodbye party. party. They did the bit. <laughs>